Hello, 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 friends. Let's do this and that. And that looks great. Turn the mic up. Music looks good. Happy Friday. Happy Good Friday to those of you who celebrate as well. I know that we're not cooking the proper food for that today, so it's a-okay if you cannot be here for that. Hi, hi, Mish. How are you? Kimmers was first again, as always. So thank you for that, Kimmers. The Real Magic Cookie. You have really nice weather today, Cookie. 20 degrees Celsius. So nice. He's going to go for a drive later. We have Blood Oak with us today. We have a dust. Hi, dust. How are you doing? And yeah, Sam was with us today. He just got back. We are charging the car at the solar station today since no one works there. You must cook the proper food. You must for dust. Yeah, it's going to be a good one today. Steak Sando's going down. <laughs> As someone who was raised Catholic dust, that's like the first thing in my head today. So Sam and I had a funny uh, convo about it, right? It's like, well, we're not Catholic, even though we are maybe raised a little bit that way. Yeah, it's, it's just funny. It's like, you don't have to, but you always think about it. It's like, oh, we're going to get in heck. We're getting hecked up. It's been snowing all week in Cascadia. This morning, woke up to snow and zero degrees Celsius along the coast. Snow, whoa, Amp. Whoa. Yeah. Dust, you were born Catholic? Me too, man. Me too. What is proper Good Friday food? I'm happy you asked, Blood Oak. So typically, if you are Catholic, you only eat fish today. No meat per se. But I don't really see how fish is any different, honestly. And yeah, cameras, the sandwiches that we're going to make today sound really yummy. I already talked to Rando. He made me a yummy latte coffee this morning. He's excited for the sandos as well. Yeah, let's stray from religion for chat's sake. Of course. But I did see who? Hey, hey, it's me, Salty. He was baking some Easter breads today. And then I also... I'm kind of sad because I forgot to put uh, hot cross buns on the stream menu. Maybe we'll make a quick batch on Sunday. Probably will. We really like them. So it's basically hell from here on. I would say, Mish, hot cross buns and we'll sing the whole song together, Cookie. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we got the steaks in here. There's the meat slap for all y'all. Two steaks to marinate up. I have a starter for the bread. I started it at 8 a.m. this morning, so four hours ago. It's just been chilling in a nice warm spot, getting happy. So I'll bring that out so that we can make the bread dough. I think we'll marinate the steak first and then make the bread dough from there. Look at it. It's all bubbly and happy. Just water, a little bit of yeast, and some flour. So this is for the King Arthur baking recipe. Just pop that back there. And yeah, lots of good recipes linked too. This is not the first time that we are making these ciabatta rolls on stream. Would 100% recommend for you to make them. They are honestly probably the easiest bread I've ever made. Because once you make the dough and have it proofed, all you do is pat it out and then you cut the buns instead of having to roll them. Just cut the buns into squares, put them on each six per sheet pan and you're good to go. Like it couldn't be easier. There's no rolling involved. Yeah, so I'm excited Twitch Blackmore because we have some like leftover sliced deli meats and cheese in the fridge. So recipe for the buns is going to make 12. Well, obviously that's going to be way more than we need today, but they're so good left over too. Like you can pop them in the freezer, take them out, just quickly toast them up. So good. So yeah, if you're going to make bread, make a little extra for yourself. Ciabatta is also a great emergency pizza dough. Good one, Amp. I would actually be curious to see how that dough works as a pizza dough base. Now you got me thinking. <laughs> Mish, you're already in hell. That's where you're at. Okay, so first things first. 
Actually, we're going to make the dough first. We'll mix the dough first before marinating the steak. Mix dough, proof, one hour in a nice warm spot. Divide in 12, probably proof another 30 minutes, I would say, before baking. Bake at, if I know ciabatta, it's a little bit higher temp. And hello, another one? Another 12 monther? We can't keep track of them anymore. Gearbox man, thank you so much. 12 month resub. Being part of the kitchen crew for one year now. Hopefully we've inspired you to keep spreading the deliciousness. Maybe even taught you a thing or two. That would be nice. Okay, I'll pop up those recipes for myself. So I literally just linked the same grilled steak recipe that we used last week when we did them because it was just so good. Hey, ciabatta rolls. Where's our temp and timing? Temp, 425F, see, I knew it. It's not the typical 350 Fahrenheit. Bake at 425 Fahrenheit. 18 to 20 minutes. And actually they proof for longer than I thought after we divide them. So good thing we're making them early. Good thing. Yum. And yeah, they do not recommend kneading this dough by hand. And yes, that is well amp. 99% on the food truck goal. What is going on here? Weasel, what's up? Welcome. I have, yes. Yes, Gearbox man, you're getting lots of ideas. Perfect. I love to be that human for you all. Okay, carry on our list here before we get started on the bread dough. So after we mix the bread, obviously we'll marinate the steaks. Minimum 30 minute marinade up to overnight works good though, but I will say the like, two to three hour marinade that we did last week on them was so perfect. Like they were flavored right through with the herb and garlic. It was good. So I'll probably just do the same thing again. It was that dang good. Hey, after we marinate the steak, we have a couple condiments to make Yay! today. Cookie evens it out. What is this? 2,923 bits. I'm out of here. 990,000 out of the 1 million bit goal. Thank you, Cookie. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think we'll be done that goal right in the nick of time to get the truck spray fromed whenever it warms up here. It's getting so exciting. Just counting down the days, guys. Holy smokes. Did anyone post the menu yet? I don't think so. I'm gonna do this for me and you. Grilled flank steak, homemade ciabatta rolls. Okay, we got that. Okay, word. After we marinate the steak, we can make the chimichurri sauce. I was thinking of doing it in the food processor. And then also at the same time that we're streaming today, I'm gonna be taking a couple photos for Instagram for Cambro. Gotta do another sponsored post for them so we can get more stuffs. I have a list for myself of all the photos that I need to make. So chimichurri sauce is a sauce that originates from South America. I think the main place is Argentina where it's used. Cilantro, parsley, a little bit of shallot or onion, red wine vinegar, and then you choose whether you want it like a bit spicy or not. So it's just a very nice like green herbaceous sauce that is so good with steak, so good with meats. They tell you how often they want sponsored posts. Yeah, Mish, we get an email like every month saying uh, kind of the outline of what they want us to do for the post. And then they also like give you your options of prizes that you can have once you complete the post. And they're like, do it by this day. And that's basically it. Make sure you tag them and then they'll email you once it's complete and let you know when your stuff's on the way. Like it couldn't be easier. Best sponsorship i think that we have currently still so so good 
Hello, welcome back, Kauai organization. Today is homemaking Subway on my side or on your side? Okay, keep going here through our list. Just some sliced tomato and fresh spinach. We need a bit of freshness in there. Not everything has to be cooked in the sandwich. Yeah, on my side. Totally. I really, really enjoy like making sandwiches and eating them. Nice, Blood Oak. I've had chimichurri with Brazilian picanha two years ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, so anytime there's meat over fire with chimichurri sauce, so good. And it's even good with like chicken, pork. I've never tried it with salmon, but I could see that also being good. So you got options. Grilled veg even. If you're vegetarian, you can still have chimichurri. Why not? Okay, keep going here. Emmental cheese. So tomato, spinach, cheese are just a couple condiments that we'll prep, leave on the side. Really easy. Garlic mayo, I might still have a little bit. So I'll check it out in the fridge. We might just bump it up a bit more. Really simple though. Mayo, bit of minced garlic, salt and pepper, good to go. And then I have the pickled onions already done. I'm just trying to use them up in the fridge. Pickled red onion, they're very pink and vibrant. And I pickle them a bit sweeter so they're not like as strong onion flavor. I think that's it. The steak, so the grill will take about 20 minutes to heat up directly over charcoal. If you wanna see how that's done ahead of time, you can always go back and watch our uh, last flank steak VOD there for yourself. And then we also have an ASMR on YouTube that Sam made for us last time. But each flank steak only takes about 10 minutes to cook or less. No, I would say about five minutes per side to get it up to like medium and medium rare in the center. And then you also rest it for like the same amount of time that it cooks for or more. Thanks for posting that link, Sam. Yeah, guys, go check it out. Put a like on there, leave a comment, letting us know how you feel about it. I'm gonna pop my hair back and then away we go. Making our bread and then marinating our steaks. Oh no! Oh no! The best subs, follows, viewers you could ever have are bought. Something tells me that that's not actually the case. <laughs> oh shoot. Good start. Darn it, man. Hello, OMG Pete. How are you doing? You're doing good. That's awesome to hear. And you all, we're doing good here. Yep, I'm excited to get cooking again. We have some fun planned for later. That's why we kind of have like an easier, quicker stream today, as well as Sam will be up at 2 a.m. coming up this morning, or let's say tonight, 2 a.m. to get the brisket started. So that'll be fun. Okay, pop this recipe up for myself from King Arthur. Shabbat rolls. Place everything into the bowl of the mixer. Beat at medium speed for about seven minutes. And it's gonna be very sticky. Yeah, it says like, it needs quite a few hours to proof. So we'll see how this goes. But I've made these in the same day before, so shouldn't be any issues, I don't think. And yeah, blood oak, that's for you. A Samo brisket. And then we're also making it because Blondie is here visiting this weekend from our community. So we wanted him to taste a little bit of the Southern barbecue that Sam makes. Couldn't hold out on him. Yes, sir. Okay. Come on in. That's opened up as much as possible. Three AM Mountain Standard Time. It's 
a very beefy weekend. Beef today, beef tomorrow. And then we lighten it up with some chicken and shrimp on Sunday. Let's put this up here. Actually, I'll put the other two attachments in that I need. The spatula and the dough hook. We will mostly weigh everything for this bread recipe. We'll start with the water, the yeast, and the starter that we mixed up. And then from there, we can do the flour and whatever other ingredients there is. So do that. I plugged that in already for no reason. Anonymous cheerer, let's do this. Thank you, friend, for the seven bits. We're gonna open up the cord on the scale. There we go. Woohoo! A very beefy day indeed. Very beefy two days coming up, creep tumor. How are ya? Okay. So all of this starter, this is only a four hour old starter. We can go up to 15 hours, but look at it. That's how it should look. It's happy, nice and bubbled up. So that'll get added, but I like to do the water first. Otherwise that gets all stuck. So we need 152 grams of lukewarm water. So I'll go grab that. Might even just pour it into the starter container to like loosen it up. Not too hot, not too cold. go. Head a note to enjoy the weather. Yeah, have the best day ever, Cookie. And yeah, you might catch us later. We'll see. So what did I say? 152 grams of lukewarm water. Getting close. And then we can always add more later, right? If we need it. So I usually just keep a little bit of extra lukewarm water on the side. I'm just gonna grab a spatula because I'll have to scrape this stuff out. And then we can sprinkle the yeast over. I'll go grab it from the fridge. Two teaspoons of yeast. And then we also need some dry milk powder, which is like such a typical King Arthur baking ingredient. Probably have just enough. Nice. Look at that. Not looking very exciting yet. Yeast. Two teaspoons. What's everyone else getting up to today? Doing any family or friend stuff, or is that getting saved for Sunday? One. Two. Should actually mix that up a bit.
You can even just use your spatula. Just to get the yeast moistened a bit, start waking it up. Nine of 12? Oh my God, what? Who is that? What is going on here? An anonymous cheer just finished the goal. I'm dead. I'm walking out. <laughs> Who is it? We can't even say thanks. <laughs> what is happening here today? Happy Friday, friends. High nine of 12 with the 10 biddies. Holy smokes. Whoever just donated 10,000 bits, thank you. I don't know what to do anymore. My life is forever changed. Another goal complete. Thanks so much, guys. I don't even know what to say. We're over. We're over the 100%. Hi, Mary. And that's nice, Blood Oak. Your family doesn't celebrate Easter at all. Just have four nice, carefree, obligation-free days. This is insane. I want to like keep the goal up the rest of the weekend though, because it's we're just so excited. We we did it. I still haven't found out yet what the first day was that we put the goal up. I tried to go searching, but I think we're like, was it New Year's when we did it? So like just over a year then, a year and a couple months, one million bits. I'm dead. Thank you again, Anonymous, for four. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, keep going here with our bread. Kate's in shock. Uh, we'll do the flour measuring next. And I think we got to do the dried milk still. Tear that. Two tablespoons of dry milk. I seen this bag earlier. Whoa, just enough, I think. This is this stuff. And I mean, let's say this, if you can't find dry milk powder, you could always add, add the amount of the dried milk powder with the water and then just do like liquid milk. I've done it before, it works. Hi, eye shot, how are you? Just sprinkle that over the liquid. And then what this will do is make our buns really soft inside. Anytime you add dairy or fat to bread dough, it makes it very soft and supple on the inside. <laughs> Ew, dust! <laughs> Imagine! I eat dried milk powder by the spoonful. No, you don't. Please. Yeah, soft bunners. Okay, next one. Our flour, 360 grams of all-purpose flour. And then it's just a bit of olive oil and salt to finish up, but we can get this mix in. <laughs> Dust. I can't even imagine how that would taste, eating dried milk powder with the spoon. They're already dead. Yeah. So I don't know, I guess if you keep them inside, it just drains it. I don't know, Samo. Okay, put that in. Tap, 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 -aroo. Done with the scale. Puffinized? Puffinized. Thank you for the follow, friend. Welcome. You've been puffinized. Does that mean they turned into a puffin? 
And holy, it's Joyce. Hi, Joyce. How are you? I miss you guys. It's been a long minute, very long, longest minute that there ever was. Since you've been able to hang out, life has gotten so busy. I know, same with us. Well, thanks for popping in, Joyce. And like, thanks for the congrats on the goal. I hope everything on your end has been awesome too. Whatever you've been working towards. <laughs> Twitch Blackmore, it's actually not that bad, Kate. It just tastes like milk candy without the sugar. I would try it just once, right? Just to say that you did. Okay, we can start mixing this. We need three tablespoons of olive oil, two and a quarter teaspoons of salt. We have everything else, all of the starter. We got yeast, flour, water, milk. Turn it on. Grab our last two things. Drizzle in the oil. Actually, I'll do the sprinkle of salt first. So two and a quarter teaspoons. I'm gonna do like two bigger pinches. Oh, that's so cool, Joyce. Where are you going diving? I tried that once in my life. Oh no, guys, the olive oil is hard. I guess we'll have to use a different oil. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Just gonna stop this for a sec. So three tablespoons. I think that'll do it. Off the coast of Southern California in Catalina Island. Cool. So my diving experience is in Thailand. And they have like really uh, inexpensive courses that you can take there even to do like deep, deep diving. So I tried my hand at that when we were on Koh Tao Island. And yeah, I'm not a good diver. I freak out underwater. So yeah, we did like tests in the pool, nice and deep and stuff like that. And I didn't pass through the test. So I was like, I could maybe push myself to like go into the ocean and try it, but I would be scared of something bad happening. So then I just didn't follow through. I'm more of a snorkeler, if you will. <laughs> Carses, I love this mixer cape. Isn't it awesome? This doesn't even look like there's enough dough in here to make 12 buns. That's magic. And it's snowing so hard where you're at right now, Carses. Like a blizzard. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Yeah, it can take a while for sure. I just think at that point, I wasn't really in the right headspace yet, and I was still young. Maybe I'll try it again another day. Okay, there's all that stuff. So I'll start putting a couple of things away while this mixes. It should mix for around 10 minutes or so. I'll show you what it should look like though when it's finished mixing. That is so nice, Blood Oaks. You have like the same day as Cookie has right now. Cause it's still chilly here. I think it's like minus two, minus three right now. We're back to a little freezing. Put the yeast away. That's good. Put our salt and our flour away. Done with these. Yeah, how is it where you're at, Mary?
And then I'm gonna take a coffee bathroom break already. It's getting me. I will say I did chug it before stream, so BRB. I'm backity back, weasel. What's up? Thank you for the three months in a row, friend. And hi, FCB. I'm gonna get some hypes in chat for sure. Nice one, weasel. 30 Celsius where you're at, FCB. Okay, look at this. Look at how this is getting so smooth. That's what we want. Building up the gluten. I'm going to turn it a bit higher. Keep it working. Hi, green box box. How are you doing? There we go. Let me go a bit out. There we go. Okay. Hand towel. Good to go. Maybe while this is finishing mixing, we can gather all the ingredients we need for the steak marinade. Garlic. Got right here. Some herbs, I think I did last time, red wine vinegar, and a bit of olive oil. I would like to be able to use this olive oil, so I'm gonna go put it in a warm spot. I think we got thyme in the fridge. What else? Ooh. Even have a little bit of tarragon. I'll sneak that in for sure. And then our basil we're saving for later. A bit of parsley too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much normal for their FCB. I love that. So warm. So dang warm. FCB, do you watch Hitch at all? I know that he was, he's taking his bike tour down the east coast of the States. I know he was in Florida before. I'm not sure where he's at now. Hey, this is getting there. I don't think we'll need any more water, so I will get rid of that for now. And as far as gluten goes, I think this is good too. Some bubbly on the way back from work. Congratulations on the goal you're saying, Amp? Or did I miss something? I think we should. Where's the Costco liquor store? Okay, that's good. Get out a couple containers. Do the marinade the steak in there. Nice one. And like, we didn't even clean the steaks last time. The flanks, we literally just took them out of the package, marinate them, good to go. 
You're on the west side about five miles from the Gulf. That is so cool, FCB. Hi, pupper. We got a cute pupper girl. What do you think? You being a good cooker dog? Nice. You're done your nap? Done napping. And guys, it's still showing a little bit of dropped frames again this week from my side. So I don't know what the heck. Internet world wrecked. Let's see if I reset it, what it does. That's getting stretchy. We can go a bit longer still. I might add a little sprinkle of flour. Okay, watch out, girl. Just a little sprinkle. It looks a little bit tacky still to me. That'll do it. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. Okay, mixed dough. We'll check that one off. Proof it for one hour until it's around double in size. So let's get our plastic out too. Yep, that's looking better. This is one of the most important parts of making bread at home is making sure that you have mixed the dough long enough and developed the gluten properly. Because if you don't do that, then when you go to bake it later, things are just not gonna go your way. And then you'll run into issues and probably get a bit sad. And we talked, we've talked about it before on stream, it's much more difficult to over mix a dough than to under mix. It's usually where people have the problem is they just don't mix it long enough. It does take a good 10 minutes. And then if you're gonna do it by hand, probably double that amount of time, 20 minutes of kneading by hand. Wild. Yeah, check out the recipes FCB. This one is so, so good. What did we use these before? I think we've done pulled pork sandwiches before with these buns. I can't even recall what else, but this is not the first time. What else? We did a lamb sandwich, I think. We did a lamb sandwich, yum. And yeah, I kind of test how the gluten is developing just by getting my spatula in there, my scraper. Because you can see the way it stretches, right? It is building up its strength. So, so close. Oh, this is one thing I'll do while we're all waiting together. I'm gonna go find the link for where we're gonna go eat tonight. You guys can check out the menu if you want. Copy pasta. Check this out. That's where we're gonna go eat with Blondie. I haven't even looked yet. Moose, Brussels sprout, gnocchi, gooseberry, beef, financier. That's a sample menu of the tasting menu. I'm intrigued. Just feeling the dough. Yeah, it can go a little bit longer still. A touch too tacky. Let it keep stretching. Go.
go, go, go. Probably one more minute and then we're good, guys. Try the soup sunrise when you get there. Wait, is there actually a cocktail named that? <laughs> I gotta look now. There's not. <laughs> But I'll make it a one for us. Are you saying um, the summer side? Gin, citrus, simple syrup, and mint. It's, it's a non-alcoholic? Okay, wait, what? That's so cool. The Souk Sunset. Lumet, Lum Rum, Sumacod, Spice Syrup, and Ginger Beer. That would be good. That's so cool. So we get to be like, hey, we've lived there before. Good eye, Amp. Amp's like, we know that place. <laughs> so many streams from there. Island life. We can check that one off. For sure, hey? Check. We have lived on an island. Successfully, let's say. We have built up food for friends on that island. And I think that's probably still gonna be the name on the truck. Just food for friends. I think that's still my favorite one. Food for friends by Cook with Kate. Okay, I think we're here. I'm gonna blast it really fast. Just get it ripping. Let us see. Boom, boom, boom. Take that off, unplug. Noms for Friends by Cook with Kate. <laughs> We'll just call it Nom, Mary. Yo, it's the Nom truck. I like it. Noms. The Nom truck. If you know, you know. And if you don't, don't even ask. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can take a little bit of this. It's so dang sticky right now. That's why it also has to proof. Can we get our window test? Like just? Whoa, I gotta wash my hands now. Sticky, sticky bits. Bam. Now I'll kind of just roughly form that into a ball the best that we can in there. And we'll put it in a nice warm spot. I still have soap on my hands. We're sudsed up. So I'm hoping within the hour it'll be good. Am I aware it is Good Friday? Yep. I am. Crimson. I'm not a Catholic person. So I don't really follow 
that at all for Good Friday. But uh, yeah, I already said it at the beginning. Cause like, I know that we're not cooking fish today. So if that bugs you, by all means, you don't have to participate. I won't be sad and I hope you won't be either. Everyone say bye to the ciabatta. It's fine, thanks. I'm excited to make your food on Sunday though. It's gonna be awesome. Maybe I've liquefied olive oil now, maybe. Okay, let's get that timer on. A one hour. Make sure that it will notify me. Awesome. You'll be having a PC seafood lasagna for supper. We So we've been doing a lot of Instacart shopping at Superstore. And yeah, one of the orders this week, someone got a bunch of those pre-made meals. They look good. Have you had it before? Because I was eyeing that one up. I was like, that actually sounds really nummy. And Mish, how can it bug you when it's fish? <laughs> ah! Is that an Annie? How long did it take me to realize you were green fang? It didn't at all actually, because I was doing the, like I said, the menu pots and pans redemption for Sunday for you. And then I saw it was changed in the rewards request queue that I have. It's like Crimson Orion 69. Like who said they were gonna send me DMs for recipes? I was like, Green Fang. Okay, they changed their name. Yep. Smarter than she looks, let's say. Okay, we're gonna marinate our steak, guys. Marinate our two flank steaks. Get going. Please come into the kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes she needs to get invited back into here. What a dog. You've had the lasagna multiple times. What is the main seafoods in it? This is what we're gonna marinate the steaks in today. So let's just get them out of the package first. We're doing two again. We'll bring over our knife, some kitchen shears, probably a paring knife. It is so nice. It's shrimp, scallops, and lobster in there. That is not what I expected. And yeah, isn't this gonna be good? It does have pretty good amount of fat on there for flank. Just gonna try and get it out of there, but keep most of the juices in the bag. Keep most of the juices in the bag. And yeah, this is my, one of my favorites. I won't say it's my favorite, favorite bread recipe. So I also like to make potato buns. But these ciabatta buns, they could not be easier. Yeah, that steak looks awesome. So one, and then this one's a bit smaller, it looks like. That one's larger, the other one's smaller. But this one does have a nice, little bit of fat there. But like I said, there's not really any reason to clean this up. Everything on the outside is gonna break down. Like I didn't have any bits from when we sliced it up last week that I was like, oh, there's like gristle in there. So yeah, you're good to go. We'll just pop that to the side, make a little bit of marinade in a bowl or a container. Modern towel. We just hit it today, modern towel. We just hit it today. We had an anonymous cheerer cheer 10,000 bits. I don't know who it was, but thank you very much, friend. That is wild. Yeah, you know I like my sourdough, it's true. Okay, we got parsley. I have tarragon to use up, thyme, garlic. We'll do red wine vinegar. I really liked that last time. Samo got a big, big one for us. Might as well grab the Worcestershire sauce while I'm there too. Look at this thing. Red wine vinegar versus Kate. 
about one eighth of a kate. <laughs> Reach. Oh, gotta grab the garlic press so that we can mince the garlic. Our olive oil, and then just a bit of salt and pepper in the marinade, and then we always season as well before it goes on to the grill. Food truck, truck shopping IRL streams, Modern Towel? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever watched our grocery shopping streams. We did one yesterday. That was a fun one, actually. I would recommend watching that one because we went to four different places. Go shopping for the truck. Oh. Like to outfit it? Yeah, we already own the truck. We already own the truck. It's been in storage over the winter. And then we're going to get it spray foam insulated is the first thing. Whenever it gets warm. So we live in a cold area. Put that up there, just a little container with a spoon to mix stuff up. Stew with our herbs first. Yeah, we've been looking at like the truck we have, similar style, make stuff like that now. Oh man, we can sell it easily for like 10 grand more right off of the bat, not even doing nothing to it. That's how much stuff has just inflated. Let's do like that for the parsley. And then a lot of this is going to be put into the chimichurri later. So you can keep that out if you want. She's such a good kitchen doggo. She's literally just standing right here, just watching. And it is amp, so we always say we never plant the garden before May 2-4 because it always likes to snow the last weekend of May. So yeah, absolutely nothing is going to happen until that weekend. And even then, like sometimes you get snow in June. But yeah, we're planning for like first week of June. Get a little bit of work going on that. Slowly but surely. Can't dial in the, the lighting in here today. I think it's just because it's sun and clouds outside. Just keep picking and then we'll have to do more of this later to make our chimichurri. It's gonna be so nummy. A lot of those increased prices in stores and are at gas pumps is a combination of inflation. <laughs> and yeah, as we all know, just a touch of corporate greed out there. Just a touch. That next one we can pick is some thyme. Got a little bit of time for that. We're just gonna use all of it. That goes in recycle. So you just hold the bottom of the stem and pick the leaves off. Obviously any that are like really browned, you don't have to use that. It's kind of lost its flavor at that point. We only want the nice fresh green herbs. Who's had a steak sandwich before? I know there's like a lot of different variations out there. But this is a pretty typical cut of steak used for sandwiches, either like a flank or a lot of restaurants will order in flat iron steak, which is very, very similar cut to flank steak. Can I ask how tall I am, Mary? I am five foot four. 
five foot four, five foot five, like literally right in between. You've had it before, Dust. Isn't it so good? And then one of my other like favorite steak sandal or meat sandwich, beef sandwich version, I should say rather, is like a beef dip. Nom. So I'll do that one sprig of tarragon. Maybe save the rest of that for something. <laughs> yeah, in a previous life, I would make a steak sammy with spinach. Yeah, we're gonna do that today. I like to mix in like fresh, fresh ingredients into sandwiches as well as some cooked stuff. A lot of textural and flavor contrasts. Let's do some chopping. We'll start with the parsley and work into those. We'll use the garlic press to mince the garlic up nice and fine. Dips? Dips. Normally you're not a cilantro eater, but there is a Tex-Mex place there that has a nice cilantro line sour cream. It doesn't taste like soap. Nice. Well, at least you can have some of that green fang. I will say like chimichurri is pretty strong cilantro flavor. But if you make it right, it, it tastes balanced with the parsley and the other flavorings. Oh no, Mary. I'm putting away dishes, Kate. I'm a five foot lady in a kitchen made for a six, six man. So you always have a kitchen stool around you then. Cause yeah, I still have a kitchen stool to reach sometimes at the top of my shelving here. <laughs> Poor Mary. That would be so hard. Yeah, nice. Cilantro lime crema on burritos is money for sure. A Victorian kitchen. Yeah, five shelves. Like, why do? Exactly. Okay, that looks good for the parsley. And then I will say, so fresh herbs are more delicate than dried herbs. So we just have to watch later when we're grilling the steak over charcoal that the heat doesn't get out of control. Cause you can burn herbs and garlic pretty easily. But we did cook it at 500 degrees Fahrenheit last time and that worked really good. Nothing got burnt. It just tasted delish. Oh yeah, amp. So that was my first job ever was, I was a grocery clerk at the store. So I stocked the shelves, made sure they looked good. Yeah, the cereal aisle is the hardest one because the boxes are so tall on the top shelf. I would like literally climb on the shelves to stock them when I was 14. It's crazy. Okay, time has been chopped. Chop that time up. Next one, tarragon. We're just going to mince the garlic in the press. We'll press it nice and fine. And then we'll massage this into the steak. Massage the meat. Yes, was that your human? Nice. There's never enough time in a day. Am I right? <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, that does it. You could sneak a bit of rosemary in with these herbs too if you wanted. Beef holds up to that herb. But that's about it. I definitely wouldn't recommend sage. That's a no. Hey, so parsley, thyme, tarragon. Grab some garlic. We'll press that in and then we'll add our liquids. Nice. What kind of job did you get? That's always exciting. Okay, we'll go one. One garlic. 
Ha ha ha. Two. Three. Don't most of the herbs work well with poultry too? They do. Yeah, so like sage would be better with poultry than beef. But you could also do sage with pork as well. Would liquid smoke work with the steaks? I would recommend that amp if you're gonna like cook them inside in a cast iron pan, something like that if you wanted a grill related flavor. But if you're gonna cook it over the grill, then I wouldn't recommend liquid smoke. It can be quite overpowering. Okay, we'll do one more like small-ish garlic clove and I think that'll be good. Your new security and lockup tenant for your apartment building. Well, that couldn't be easier. That's super cool. Get to like work where you live. You don't have to travel anywhere. Awesome. I hope it goes well. It's too cold for outdoor cooking, sadly. Well, us Canadians, crazy, crazy Canuckians. We're like minus two, perfect for grilling. <laughs> Just washing my garlic hands. I was thinking about it too though, Am, because it is a bit chilly out today. I was like, do I just want to cook it in my cast iron grill pan to get the marks on there? Okay, next one, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, unless it's minus two Fahrenheit. So we'll do no more than a tablespoon. Next one, our red wine vinegar. You could also do balsamic vinegar if you like that one better. This will be a bit challenging to pour from, but I think we got this. This actually helps to break down the meat and tenderize it. Go like that. Who's your sister sauce? Huh? What are you trying to say to me today, Mary? Wouldn't risk it below 10 Celsius. Did we get some liquefied olive oil? Just. And then just enough olive oil really to like, get this to coat the meat. Don't need a ton. Let's see, that should do it. <laughs> You know it's cold when the olive oil is solid. And then lastly, some salt and pep. Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Huh? Worcestershire. Who's your sister sauce? Ah, that's why. It's the who's your sister sauce. <laughs> I have never heard that said, so thank you for that, Mary. Who's your sister sauce? One pinch of salt for the two steaks for now. Let's mix it up. Smells basically the same as last time. I'm in. Do this, just gonna wipe this excess herbs off. Bring these up. <laughs> yeah, most people just say it as it's spelled and I'm sure even the Brits maybe struggle, but we all know that it's tasty. So just spoon this over. I'm just gonna put some gloves on and then massage it through evenly the rest of the way. And yeah, I make a pretty condensed marinade because I don't like to just pour it all out after it's been used. I like it to actually go into the meat. Of 
McLovies. Just chug it. Chug the sauce, Mish says. Yuck. Yucko. And yeah, a lot of people don't know that there's anchovies in Worcestershire sauce, so it is not vegan. Lee and Perrins on mashed taters? I've never heard of that one. Now I'm intrigued though. Okay, let's maybe deal with this under one first. Lift it up. Get some of that vinegar and stuff in there. Just massage the herbs and garlic around while I hold this other one out of the way. Give it a little flip. It's already smelling good, guys. Next one. What do I do? Maybe I'll just pop this up over there. Swish it around. Get all of that goodness rubbed into the meat. Instead of letting it just sit in the container. Nice. Okay. Look at that. Yeah, it works and it tastes good. Crimson. Oh, Mary's done the Lee and Perrins on mashed potatoes. Cool, guys. Well, thank you for sharing that. So many things being talked about today. Nice. So see how I just flipped that over to make sure it was really even. And the vinegar is already coloring the meat already starting to break it down that's why you don't do more than a day or overnight for these marinades because it will start to actually break down the meat flank steak so you assume it comes from the cow's back end i think flank is actually like around the side here why do i feel like it's kind of the oblique yeah so I think your flank is like right here where your love handles are kind of. That's what I would imagine. Okay, cover this up. Oh, this is where I take my one photo. One photo for Cambro. Turn up the light there for a sec. Doing one for the marinade today. We'll do one later for when the meat's resting in another one. Yeah, the cow moves its hips pretty fair amount, right? They're always walking around. That's the only way you remember the cuts by the cow movements. That makes sense, Creep. Yeah, that's kind of how I think about stuff too. So now you just put this back in the fridge. Keep carrying on. Next one, we're going to get into our chimichurri sauce. So we'll get the food processor out, the robo coop. We got a lot of herbs to pick first. So maybe we'll do the cilantro. And then go from there. So let me take a peek here. That's the next recipe. Chimichurri sauce from Serious Eats. Fresh herbs, garlic, olive oil, red wine vinegar. So like literally the marinade. They come together in a tangy sauce that works wonders on steak, contrasting the heavier flavors of the grill and textures inherent to beef. Why it works. A food processor makes quick work of fresh herbs. Whisking in the olive oil by hand after prevents the bitterness of oxidation. I didn't know that. I've already learned something. And then a splash of red wine vinegar keeps the sauce tangy and bright. Yeah, cleaning deer. Good one. I still want to be able to do that at some point in my life. Interesting crimson. Yeah, I never heard of that before. So, chimichurri. 
Chimichurri's etymology is steeped in lore, with some claiming it originated with an Irishman named Jimmy McCurry, or a British meat man. We have Canadian meat man here. I love that. British meat man named Jimmy Curry. Oh, so chimichurri. <laughs> While others say it's a mangled version of the phrase, give me the curry. All we know for sure is that this tangy Argentinian sauce is a revelation with flank steak, complementing its hearty flavor with the herbal notes of fresh parsley, cilantro, and olive oil. Total time, 15 minutes. Serves, eight. Makes one cup, perfect. Wait, they didn't do any cilantro in the chimichurri. They just did parsley. Well, I'm gonna do half and half because it's better that way. Trust. And then if you want a little bit of oregano, but I don't think I'll put it. I'd rather do cilantro parsley. Garlic, olive oil, red wine vinegar, salt, and then if you want some red pepper flakes, but I'm not gonna spice it up. It is quite nice though. Red pepper flakes little bit of kiss of heat with the grilled meat. Mm -hmm. So I'll be right back with some herbs. Let's make a sauce. What you think, puppers? Pat, pat. Oops, I didn't see that there. Oh, that's what I'll do. Oops, oops, Ashtra. Okay, now we're good. Now we're good. And then, so one bunch of cilantro we'll, we'll do for today, for the chimmy. And then the other bunch is for Sunday, for Crimson Orion. The Thai green curry. We're gonna make the paste ourselves. Astra's easy to please, isn't she? Defo. Quite easy to please. So this is a cilantro. And we don't necessarily have to like completely pick the leaves off of this stem. We'll just trim a little bit off since we're using the food processor. That'll do a lot of the work for us. My knife is in the soapy water, all cleaned up. Yeah, venison, that's what we did. We would do for Zach's venison that we would process for him. We would mix it with just a little bit of pork, typically a pork belly or shoulder, just to keep it more moist in his burgers and sausages, stuff like that. So that's where I trim the cilantro, like the bottom couple inches. And then from here, I'm just gonna do a couple cuts to prep it for the food processor and now it won't get wrapped all around the blade. So that's good to go. Just push it over. I think I'll do all of the parsley. I'll leave a little bit because I like to use it for garnish this weekend. And yeah, actually take a little bit more of the parsley out because we are going to do urban garlic grilled veggies tomorrow to go with the brisket. And so same thing that we did with the cilantro, we can do with the parsley. It's kind of those bottom two or three inches but we don't have to cut all of that off. Bam, bam. I like a little bit of shallot in there, so I'm gonna blitz it up with the garlic. I think I have a touch more. Oops, I'm knocking stuff over. One shallot. And the garlic, since it's staying fresh, I'm gonna do like four, 
four cloves, let's say. Four medium-sized cloves. And it is staying good in this container still. Better than buying the whole heads. That's weird. Okay, trim this up next. <laughs> Never enough garlic. We got a command for that. Exclamation mark, garlic. Bonk would be proud. So this, we'll just kind of cut the shallot to match the size of the garlic clove. We'll blitz these up together kind of first and then add the herbs from there. Move that over so I can pop the food processor up here. <laughs> I love the thanks at the end for that. Thanks. So funny. Oh, we still got our other plug up. We're all plugged up. One time you got a plate of pasta at Eastside Mario's and they garnished it with so much parsley that you could barely see the pasta under it. Whoa, that's a bit much. It's like, hey, sorry. We accidentally dumped our parsley all over your pasta. Hope you enjoy. Uh that's bad. That just shows like whoever is cooking there does not know their flavors. And plus you should be like garnishing with basil for pasta, not parsley. Parsley is for like French food. Let's call him out, Crimson. Hey. Come on over. So starting with garlic and shallot. Make sure your blade's all locked in. Perfect. It'll probably mostly fling up and stick to the sides but I always like to give it a blitz on its own first. It actually works so good. So good. Yeah. It's this one, it's like a little piece of skin there. And whoa, it's burning my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Do not go that close. Okay. I'm gonna grab a spatula. Clean off the sides there. And then at least it's broken up a bit that when it mixes with the herbs and we blend it, it should really get chopped up nice and fine from that point. <sighs> That's burning my eyes, guys. Strong. Okay, so parsley, cilantro next. Yeah, try chopping Spanish onions and let me know how you feel. I'll get back to you on that. So I'll blitz this up first. And then we just do a little bit of salt and pepper with the vinegar when we add it. And then it says we whisk in the olive oil after, so we'll definitely do that. And that way everything stays nice and green. Ready? On though. Didn't even stand a chance. Yahoo! Just gonna stop, do a scrape around. Cause like I said, it likes to fling up stuff onto the side. 
and then it gets a bit stuck there. It's already nice and finely chopped though. So we'll do one more. Smelling so dang fresh too. Heck yeah, Dust. See you soon. Have an awesome walk, dude. Go get that fresh air and vitamin D. We need it. I know I'll be going out a bit later, so this is my indoor time right now. Okay, let's add a little bit of our red wine vinegar. Little splash. This sauce, it's, you can spoon it, like it's spoonable, but I wouldn't say it's like the texture that it's pourable. Like usually you just sauce it with the spoon, kind of let it flow over the meat, stuff like that. But it's not gonna be very smooth. It's more like chunky and kind of separated. Something like that. And we'll just do a very short mix up with the vinegar and we'll pour it into a container. Oh, and I'll also do the salt and pepper now too. You follow the Nerdy Nummies, girl Rosanna Panzino on social media. She's been posting all kinds of nice photos from a recent vacation is somewhere tropical. Ooh, but you don't know where. Uh, we're uh, patiently waiting on them to release the tickets for TwitchCon coming up. We'll probably be going to there in October. Okay, salt and pepper, donezo. So one quick mix up. This is the most tropical place you've ever been is Florida. Yeah, I've never been to Florida. I guess most tropical place I've ever been, what? Mexico or Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is not really like tropical though. A pulse. We can always add more vinegar once we pour it out of here, which I might. So now, just lift that off. We'll get rid of the main appliance here. I'll dial it in. Is Thailand the tropics? I don't know. What is it considered? You've been to Maui, Mary? Nice. Maybe one day we'll go to Kauai. Go experience Jurassic Park. This. Grab this. I'm making a mess here. It's okay though. It's fun. And then a small container. We'll grab a lid while we're here. I mean, clean. Put that out of there. There we go. So this spatula came with the food processor designed to be used together. Should be able to actually just take the blade out. It's not too messy, the sauce that we made. Has this little bit of like sweetness aroma from the vinegar too. Okay, that's where we're at, guys. Basically chopped herbs, garlic, and shallot so far. 
And hello, Cataraxia, how are you doing? Yeah, we're gonna be adding a little bit more red wine vinegar now, because that's a little bit too chunky for how it actually should be. And the shallot just making my nose run. I have to go blow my nose after this. Now I'll top it up a bit. Go like that. And then a touch of olive oil. Hi, Armored Gimp. How are you doing? And my olive oil is a bit solid right now because it cooled back off in Canada. Try and work its way out of here. Squeeze. And we'll get just a small whisk. And whisk that in, it said. Doing well, good. And yeah, all is good here. We had a pretty fun, busy week. Whoa, look at how that just came together. And we'll for sure have a little taste too. Make sure we're happy with it. We ended up with two cups worth of chimney, not one. I did use extra herbs though. But that's how it should look. Like I said, it's more spoonable, not pourable. Is it more vinegar than oil? I mean, up to what you like. Oop, didn't need that spoon. Heck it, throw it on the ground. Like I kind of do half and half vinegar to oil, but I do like it a bit more acidic. Yeah, that's how it should look. Shimmy. Taking a week to clean the kitchen. You've been sick, Mary. Thought hubby would clean it. <laughs> She's calling him out. Mmm. Cilantro-y. soap lantro -y. I'm gonna do just a little bit more olive oil, but other than that, that's good. And that's gonna get better as it sits, too. And then we also have to think, yeah, this sauce is pretty potent. There's a lot of other stuff going on in the sandwich. So it's gonna get a bit like diluted in the flavor. Once we add the tomato, spinach, the cheese on there, pickled onions. Tap, tap, tap. Maybe I'll have one more taste with the back of the spoon. Mm, mm-hmm. Donezo. Two cups of chimney. <clears throat> Done. Yeah, you can see how nice and green it is in this view. Awesome. Just a head cold, Mary. Yeah, I figured you maybe shouldn't be in the kitchen. That's a good idea. And then does Sam, Rano, and Finn have the soap gene? They don't. Yeah, isn't that nice? No one's got the soap gene. So carrying on here, what's on the timer? 17 minutes on the bread, but we'll check it. We'll see how our dough is rolling along. We're gonna put a couple of things back that we don't need now. Our herbs, we'll put the chimichurri sauce in the fridge too. I'll take a peek at the bread. Hey, I heard that. What's going on back there? What to heck is going on? We have a Mrs. BC resub for 17 months in a row with none other than a Prime Gaming resub as well. Thank you for that, Mrs. BC. Hope you've been good. Appreciate using your Prime Gaming sub here. I know you only get one per month. So thanks for using it on me. I feel special. Crimson, your Nona almost never bought salad dressings from grocery stores. Usually you just put vinegar and oil in her salads. Yeah, one to one, tiny bit of salt. That's honestly all you need. And I will say like grocery store dressings now are not what they used to be. They maybe were good before. Now they're just like bottom tier 
so many preservatives and stuff in there. Sugar. Wouldn't recommend. And like most of us should have one type of oil and one type of vinegar in the house to be able to make a dressing. We're doing so good today, guys. Don't need that. We always clean up in between our tasks. Clean as you work. Now we're definitely gonna wipe the board because it's trying to get stained from the herbs. Soapy water cloth. And yeah, we're gonna get into Slicing up some tomatoes. We'll wash up some spinach for the sandwiches. Slice up our cheese. I thought we would just use up more of the Swiss cheese for this sando. But it would combine well with all the other flavors on the sandwich. What's another one that would be good? Oh, I guess we also have some provolone slice. We could do that instead too. Either or really would be good. The meat grinder is on its way. Me and some others convinced hubby that you needed one. Yes. That's gonna change your life, Mary. Like I don't even know the last time that we bought a ground meat of any type. Like whenever we need it, we just buy a hunk of meat, whether it's beef, pork, chicken, turkey, etc. Grind it ourselves. It's so, so good too. Like so good. Okay, let's check on our bread. Well, let's get in there. We'll give it a bit more. I mean, it still has 17 minutes to go. So we'll check it at that point. Not super bubbled yet though. What cuts of beef and pork? Beef, brisket's really good to grind. Chuck is really good to grind. We've also done sirloin before. Cheaper cuts. The cheaper ones are the ones you wanna grind, not the expensive ones. And then pork, either shoulder or belly. Up to you. We got tomatoes in here. I got my spinach on this side, so we'll deal with that. Pop them in a small container. There's our bag of baby spinach that Samo picked up yesterday. Baby. The baby spinach. Oh. Uh, I don't have a spinner anymore. The salad spinner died, guys. I guess we'll just drain it. We'll let it drain. The salad spinner has died. It had a crack on the side and then it just cracked too deep. And so I put it in the recycling. Yeah, ruh -oh. Isn't pork belly typically sold in giant slabs? Either that crimson, the giant slab so that you can cure it and make bacon from it. Or I have seen at Costco, they slice it like that thick and you just get the chunks of pork belly. That's what I was thinking too, Twitch Blackmore. Grab a nice big, like kitchen towel. Just put the spinach inside in like a little thing like that. Shake it up, I've done that before, it works good. Okay, so that will go into a colander then, just to wash. And like out of any greens, spinach should definitely be the one that you wash. Cause that's the one that we know can carry E. coli, stuff like that, if you're not gonna cook it. And obviously we pick through for any like bad pieces that we don't want. F for the salad spinner, thank you.
we'll get a heavier duty one. Samo said. It's like, yes. I know the one. Okay, that should be way more than we need. One full colander. So I'll just give that a little rinse. A rinse -a Get a stainless one. There is a brand, the same brand as my immersion blender. This little guy, Dynamic is the brand. They make the big salad spinners and it is orange. Huge orange, heavy duty plastic salad spinner. I will be back momentarily. Got a new shirt, a new pair of shoes yesterday on the way home. You got Subway for dinner. That sounds like a fun day. What did you get at Subway? And yeah, Oak, washing your veggies and greens is always a good idea. This is true. Whether you get it organic or not, I think. Should always be doing it. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I'm gonna let this first just drain out in the dish rack while we slice the tomato. And then we'll windmill it with the towel the rest of the way. Windmill it. Let's get a small container to put the tomatoes in. Got an immersion blender from GT. GT Boutique, we have one here. I saw it the other day, I was like, what? Made to look like a lightsaber, that's cool. Okay, so anytime that we want to put tomatoes into sandwiches, we should be using large tomatoes. Is that gonna be enough? It might be. I don't know if I need any more. Let's start with that and see how many slices we get out. I'm gonna use my serrated knife to slice this because I know it'll slice better. Give this a wipe. Chimkin teriyaki on flatbread. Oh, still got the sticker. I'm the tomato now. And a new peppercorn ranch sauce. Nice, I usually get like the garlic mayo. Garlic mayo, smoky mustard. These are, I believe, just beef steaks. Tomato on the vine. We bought them last week for, I can't even remember what. Maybe a salad or something? Honestly, can't remember. Yeah, little beef steakers. And then I think Sam picked up some Romas yesterday from Costco. But yeah, always take this out of there. It's really hard. Doesn't break down. Get a gown. You always grew up eating Romas. It's like an Italian thing, hey? So not too thin on the tomato slice, but also not too thick. A like quarter inch is good. And nice big tomatoes so that they don't fly out to the back or side of the sandwich when you bite into it. I think these two will be enough. And then I just like to keep them stacked like that. Pop them in a the container. Start creating your subway, uh, subway sandwich station for when we build these up later. Yeah, cherry grape. Ooh, I've never had a tiny Tim. Is that another variety of cherry tomato? Those are so good for snacking. They're like full of flavor. Do one more slice here. Should be good. So 
We're like two to three pieces per sandwich. Let's wipe the board. Bonk, how are you? Steak sandwiches on a fry, yay. Welcome, welcome. Hope the week was a-okay so far. It went by real quick, for us at least. Don't know about the rest of you. She's flying. And yeah, pretty uh, pretty chilling day because I think a lot of people are out doing Good Friday stuff with their fam, maybe friends. Tomato, done. We'll let the spinach drain a little bit more before we shake it up. So I'll grab the cheese. You're a grandparent now. Oh, I was wondering. I saw the post, bonk. I was like, okay, same last name. Must be the sister. Or it was the daughter. But that's so cool. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I can't remember whether, it, I think it was a girl, right? Grandpa Bonk, Dunzo. That's what the world needs. Okay, let's get some cheese. And I'm just gonna use this serrated knife probably to cut the cheese. We're cutting the cheese today, chat. A boy. Okay, nine pounds, three ounces, Theoden. Obviously everything went good. Everyone's healthy and happy. Cheese, cheese, cheese it up. Back into this pack. That's grandpa bonk to you. <laughs> Doing a thorough check. There's only this one part here where I see a bit extra moisture, a bit too much got in that one holy part. I'm just gonna take it out. It was a bit fuzz, but the rest of this is perfect. Freaking awesome. So we are actually going to slice off this way because the buns will be around this same size as the square. So we'll try and do two nice thin slices that way. We're really close up. King Theoden of Rohan. <laughs> Now, do you change your karaoke name from Karaoke Daddy Scott to Karaoke Granddaddy Scott? A hundred percent. hundred percent. If you're already asking the question, we know the answer. <laughs> and yeah, Swiss cheese is pretty soft. So it should slice nice and easily. This one is a cheese dog. So let her test out we're having. She needs that. You like Swiss cheese? Cheese dog. Boom. Nine pounds is a pretty big baby. You love being a Jima. I love that you say that, Mary, because that's what I call my grandma. My last living grandparent. I call her Jima. She knows what I mean when I say it. She's the Jama. So how many slices? I plan to do eight slices at least of this, two, two per sandwich. Yeah, that would be your fault, Bonk. Daughter and you had watched the extended editions of Lord of the Rings enough. So then she chose that name. That's a really cool name though. Better than like some of the other, what should I say, new age kids names.
where are we at? Six, two, four, six. No skimping on cheese in the sandal. I think this one first piece we did, that'll be a snack pack since it's smaller. We'll do one more extra here. Snack and cheese. That one was pretty thin, but that's okay. Some swish, swish cheese. Doggo's being good, so you get one more. Madame, hi, madame. Hmm, that's the timer for the bread. It's so good, this one. Okay, bread's looking pretty good. Let's pack this stuff up first before we get into that. Mmm. It's so creamy and it's got like just the perfect little funk. I'm going to keep putting it back in here because it seems to stay really well. In the original package, let's see. Your niece in Nova Scotia will be 10 this year. Yeah, where does the time go? So this is all I'm doing, honestly. Just put the cheese on top of the tomatoes for later. Cheese dog. Moisty. How are you? Happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, bonk. Can't wait for the karma payback. Spoil the kid. Send it back to the daughter. <laughs> You're going to be one of those grandpas then, hey, bonk? Love it. Okay, I'm going to put this away. I'm so excited for this sandwich today, too. I've been, like, craving it all week. I'll put the spinach away, too. And then we'll come back, dry off the other one, so that's good to go. And then, did I see... There was some extra garlic mayo, pretty sure, right here. We'll get into that next. I need to go grab the big, big, big mayo bucket. And loud toys. <laughs> oh, shoot. The fun begins. Okay. Just one more shake. Coming over. What was that? What are you doing, doggo? Boom. Our washed spinach. R.I.P. Salad Spinner. So we are the Salad Spinner. It us. Sam's gonna go walk to grab the car. It's done charging. Amazing. Car has been charging off of solar at our new spot we found all morning. Now we're good to go for the weekend. Good one. A Samo emerged. This is all I do. Just gather the corners, shake it. It's pretty wet, I will say. Pretty dang wet in there. Ooh, I found a soggy piece. This is not the most baby of spinaches either. Like, you know when it kind of shreds up like this? It's definitely not baby spinach. This is like full-grown spinach that is now... Well, been hecked up, honestly. Hey, are you looking at my cheese right now? Just sits in front of the table beside me and is staring at the cheese. She's she's trying to use her mind magic. I'm just gonna leave the spinach in this little pack. 
in the colander and hopefully gravity will do its thing. We'll have a peek at it later on. Mary's giving programma tips. I like that. Okay, tomato, spinach, cheese, good. Bread, proof one hour, divide into 12. That's our next step. It's looking good. I think we did it. That's doubled in size. Oh, and it's nice and warm in there. Mm. So we'll divide this on a plastic cutting board because this dough is very sticky to work with. And I believe we do flour while we are working with it, not oil. Oh no, they actually say oiled, but I don't know why. I typically do flour instead. That's just how it goes. Hi, Daff. How are you? And yeah, kind of before we even start that, let's just prep two sheet pans with our silicone mat on it. That's what we'll bake the buns on. We'll get 12 pretty large, I would say, large ciabatta rolls. And this is always when I say, you gotta ciabatta. You gotta ciabatta. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. Boom. And we have a Nike, my dude. Hi, Nike. How is you? Okay, so I'm doing flour, and then we just need a bench scraper to divide all the things and get the dough out of the bowl. You can also have a sip of water. We're doing pretty good for time, I think. It's 2 p.m. now. You're having mental probs, but you're hanging in there. Well, yeah, keep hanging in there. I mean, we're all kind of dealing with stuff. Take it day by day would be my recommendation. Not every day is gonna be perfect. Little sprinkle here before we even pour it out. <laughs> what kind of bird always forgets the words to a song? A hummingbird. It just hums. I like it. Yeah, like honestly guys, we've been having like lots of sleep. Good, good week so far, but I just feel like no amount of sleep that I have is enough. Like, I just want to sleep forever. It's wild. Still no jobs? Dang. Yeah, you're being forced into the food industry. Well, yeah, like we just left ours because it was pretty terrible. Yeah, your GF's kind of in the same place, Bonk. It's pretty wild again out there. Maybe one day it'll get better, right? Look at how tall this is. Hello, gluten. Hello, gluten. We'll get the rest out since it didn't all come out clean this time. Sometimes it does. You can just tell how much stickier this dough is though compared to others. Yeah, we really mixed it well. Hi, Dave. Good to see you. How has everyone been? Pretty a-okay. was a bit sore yesterday. I went to the dentist for the first time after like quite a few years not going. 
so my mouth was really sore but today it's all good but yeah can't complain get to meet one of our community members tonight blondie we're all going out for dinner together so that'll be fun guys i'm just gonna kind of pat this into an even little thing here and that's actually all we do i'm gonna turn this it'll basically pat out you only want to go three quarters of an inch thick all around i'm gonna flower my hands as well yeah typically we go yearly but we haven't been working any places that had benefits and well, we can't afford to pay a thousand dollars each to go to the dentist. All good is there. And hi, silent one. How have you been? And that's so cool, Nike. I'm about to go to this art walk, show off your art. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. House is currently getting over the plague. Twins with the cold is no fun. Dang it. All of the mess. Yes. Yeah, go post those. Nike found some feta spring rolls. He sent me on Insta. And I was like, dude, if you don't post those in our Discord, I will. Okay, so we are cutting our buns square. So use the bench scraper to shape them that way these aren't this dough is not as big as it usually is although i might be used to making like a three times batch on that rather than a one time so that might be just my brain playing tricks on me i'm gonna go a little bit more and yeah any like really big bubbles Definitely press those out of there. And then as I'm patting the dough out, I'm just making sure that it stays even thickness all over. And I'm not pressing super hard. So I'm just trying to get this to the point where I can get like three out of each one, but I don't think that's gonna happen, guys. Might be a bit too cold out to make bread still. Sadly, last week would have been the week for it. But we always try our best. Blood oak, wait. So that's not how much it costs there? It was literally my dentist visit yesterday before benefits, $943. $943. And they're like, you have like a really low benefit amount. And I was like, well, it's better than nothing. Holy, that's insane, Nike. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this in half. Is that too much, madame? Yeah, I don't know what's going on in the dental world. But yeah, like I said, we haven't gone since 2017 when we were living in Vancouver. So we just assume that that's like how much it went up in that amount of time. But yeah, 1500 bucks to extract three teeth. Basic visit there, no x-rays. $60, Blood Oak. Okay, we're moving to Europe. We're moving to Germany. Heck this. North America, what are you doing? Okay, pat our bubbles out, even this out as much as possible. I honestly don't know if we're gonna get a full 12. I'm gonna more aim for eight. Eight buns out of this. Yeah, the dentists are not hurting for money, let's put it that way. Yours is 185 to 200 for a cleaning with x-rays. Okay, I didn't know that, guys. Yeah, scaling. I think she went all out yesterday. 
I think she went all out. Okay, so we cut that in half. Now we're gonna cut these in half as equal as possible. And then from there, we just guide it onto our sheet pan. Root scaling, what they call a deep clean. And yeah, that's what I had. They did like the this water pick sort of thing first. And then went the rest of the way with just the regular one. I was like, I've never had a, this fancy of a cleaning before. <laughs> whoa and then this is how i'm laying them on the pan so definitely a couple inches spread out <laughs> go to manitoba for the next time we have to go to the dentist okay i'm in madame this is the way a root scaling um i think they did that bonk because, yeah, my gums were definitely bleeding yesterday when they were cleaning my teeth. So now we got our four buns on the pan. Let's grab some towels to keep them nice and warm. We'll put them back in the warm spot. See how they look after half an hour, but it might have to go a full hour. Yeah, I was so sore yesterday, Bonk. Like, by the time we ended our stream, for those couple hours, I could barely, like, move my mouth anymore. I was like, I've never had that before. <laughs> yeah, silent one. Yeah, do that, except then you would live in Ontario. <laughs> That's funny. And hi, Costa. How are you? One bun. Come on, Pooh. Come in. We're not done. Boom. No, silent one lives by us. Yeah. Silent one lives in our province. Okay, next one. Cover that up and then we're good. Like I said, we'll check in 30 minutes, but it'll probably be closer to 45 minutes an hour. This is one of the more important parts of making the ciabatta bread is letting it rise enough the second time so you get it really, really bubbly inside. Where should I post the link? In the recipe section, I think Nike would be the best. Oh, that's why. Hey, what the heck? Why is there no power? That's why. Doggo. Doggo stuff. Blow the warm air onto the buns. Sweet. So that's what I mean when I say like these could not be easier to make. So we'll do 30 minutes for that to check it. You are planning to move silent? You don't want to leave Alberta because yeah, you don't want to pay more than 5% tax on everything. Do you want to actually like move province though? Okay, so divide into 12. Next one, we'll first clean up. Clean up our little bakery station. And then we can carry on with garlic mayo. Want to live in the Rockies? Yeah. Why not? Why wouldn't you, right? Truly wish you could homestead. Well, hey. I mean, that's kind of our end goal. In within the next 10 years or so, 
So it sounds like some of us have the same idea, which is pretty cool. National Dental and Pharmacare in Canada, you're saying, madame? Yeah, like we might not have perfect coverage in healthcare, but at least there's a little bit of supplementation. Just a bit. That's all we're asking for. Okay, quick little wipe up. We made a flowery mess. I didn't even get any flower on myself, really. Sweet. So we have a little bit of garlic mayo here. Just have to buy your land, make sure you get all the permits. You can't really homestead anymore. Might be easier to do that in BC then, right? Just in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, okay, so our garlic mayo, you can see there's like peppercorns in there. Let's have a little taste, but we can just add to that. Mayo, garlic, salt and pep, and if you want, a touch of lemon juice, just to give it some freshness. But yeah, we do fresh garlic, so it's got a good kick. Mmm, that tastes like Caesar dressing right now. That's really good. Okay, I'm gonna have to go grab the mayo from the big fridge, because it doesn't fit in small fridge. And then is there anything else? No. There's not. Astra just looked at you. She sees you, madame. Watch out. Okay, I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Hold tight. Now I'm back. Didn't flick it the right way. So small amount of mayo. Holy. Can we even open this? I literally can't. Show you what I'm working on here. Biggest bucket of life. Gotta get the corner popped. There we go. Phew. Thanks for posting that, Nike. I wanna make those. I wanna make those. Okay, so this is why we held on to our garlic press earlier. For our garlic mayos. Just enough mayo of whatever you think you'll need to dress the sandwiches. Maybe leave a bit extra, right? Just in case. I think that'll be good. Although I do plan on making a couple extra sandals coming up in the week. So we did one more dollop. And why is garlic mayo so dang good? These are the questions that I ask. So now, fresh garlic is pretty strong. I think we'll do 
maybe those two cloves. One bigger one, one smaller one. Yeah, crimson, you know. Garlic again. Use the press to mince it so you don't have to work as hard. What keeps that garlic from sprouting? I don't know, silent one. I really have no idea on that one. Give me a sec here. Finish pressing this and then I'll see if it says anything on the container. About if there's like a preservative or something like that that they maybe use. Scissors, peeled garlic, no preservatives, ingredients, garlic. So no, that's the answer. <laughs> Squigs, yeah, so if Kate's doing two cloves, Squigs says we need at least six then. At least. Okay, so I'll mix that in. First I'll do a little pinch of salt and pep. Good to go. Yeah, maybe it will sprout. This is a scientific experiment <laughs> with the garlic. Well, because we kept buying the just like whole heads of garlic and they would sprout within a week of buying it fresh. So he said, heck that, because we just kept tossing it out. Let's just see what happens if we buy the peeled stuff. Not jarred minced, just peeled. Believe garlic is supposed to be kept in a cool, dark temperature controlled environment. Basically keeps the heads from sprouting. So yeah, the fridge, the light turns off when you close the door. So that's cool and dark, should be good. Hi, Sam. Whoa, it's that time, hey? After 2 p.m., happy Friday. Hope you had an okay week, my dude. Yet it is. I used to not like mayo at all, but I learned to appreciate it after I started flavoring it. Yeah, garlic mayo. It's my jam too. It is kept in the fridge, that garlic, so that's why. And very low humidity too. Right, because it has the lid on there. So there's not extra moisture being put inside. This all makes sense, chat. Good one. These are the things we think about here. <laughs> yeah, you like mayo like Sam likes mustard. This we know, Nike. So after we mix this, we'll definitely have a taste. But it looks basically the same as the other one we made. Just gonna scrape that off as much as possible. And then I'll go for a little dip. That's good. Hint of garlic. It's creamy and it's seasoned. Love it. That's really gonna be good on the sandwich with the steak and the chimmy, everything like that. I'll see your sriracha mayo and raise you a miso mayo. Yum bonk. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're saying that to Crimson? It was an interesting week. Sam says, nice to see some people sweat. I mean, as someone who has worked a lot in the kitchen, you should always be sweating. If you're not sweating working in a kitchen, you're not working hard enough. Like, how is that even possible? Garlic, mayo, check. And I do have pickled onions on the list, but those are already done. So that's a check. I'm gonna take the steaks out of the fridge so they can start to warm up for the grill. Wasabi mayo is good too. That's good with what we used to do wasabi mayo with salmon cakes. 
The sun is hitting the outdoor wireless thermostat, Mary. Says it's 72 Fahrenheit. Yeah, I wish. And yeah, some people won't like wasabi mayo because of the sharp, like, horseradishy taste. <laughs> Nike, I wouldn't eat anywhere where it's only skinny cooks. That means they don't even eat the food there. So there goes a vegan place. <laughs> totally. Don't trust him. And then did we get any snow this week? What did we get? A skiff? Yeah. Overnight? Overnight last night, I think? But not, not enough to do anything. It's all already melted. Okay, wash my paring knife off. We are done with the garlic press. Yeah, smallest amount of snow this week. Just watch the pans over there, please. Thanks. Thanking you. Your favorite mayo combo. Mayo, soy sauce, ginger syrup? How do you get that? You don't have that here. Garlic and a bit of Worcestershire. Worcestershire sauce. That would be good blood oak. The one other thing I would maybe sneak in there is some sesame oil. Be like a ginger sesame mayo. Ginger sesame garlic even. Nom. Okay, getting rid of this bucket. We have an outdoor fridge here all week again. <laughs> My favorite mayo combo, guys, is no mayo, says Nike. And thanks for sharing your opinions, too. Shows how different all of our palettes are. 16 minutes on the bread still. Let's take a peek at the spinach that we are trying to dry off. They sell ginger syrup in the baking section there in a small glass jar. I've never heard of this before. That sounds so good though. Hi, Maka. How are you? And hi, Scooter Beach. <laughs> Scoots just comes in, roast in Nike. She's like, excuse? I was gonna ask that as well, Blood Oak, cause like, it obviously has a bit of sweetness if it's syrup. Yum. Okay, this is working pretty good. To dry the spinach, I'll just kind of fluff it back up and then cover it again. It's about the best it's gonna get today with no salad spinner. You just got out of a meeting on a Friday? Whoa. And yeah, earlier, this is the second thing we did on stream. Was marinade the meats. Look at these steaks today. We did garlic, thyme, tarragon, parsley, red wine vinegar, olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper. I don't even think we gotta switch those around. It's looking really good. The steak has like soaked in everything. Garlic mayo, pickled onions. So we just have to cook the steak and bake the buns. I'm gonna actually take a peek at the buns. If they're not proofing up very much yet, I'm gonna build our little proofing chamber in the oven for them. It'll work better. I'm just taking a peek to see how they're doing. I think it'll work better in the oven though. But we're gonna do that. Just pretend to turn it on. Couple moments just to get some warmth in there. Make those buns happier. 
You're trying to work on another project on a Friday? Whoa, Scooter, you're so busy. So what else do I have to do? I did the half pan for marinade, the small round for the pickled onion. We'll do the other pan for resting the meats. This one, we'll literally just put that underneath to bring it outside with a pair of tongs. Yeah, keep pushing it back. Exactly. What? All of these 12 month resubs to the channel and we're out of VIP badges. I wish I could give you one, Maka. Thank you so, so much. Being part of the kitchen crew for 12 months, but I know it's been much longer. You were also like one of the first few members of, of our community when we started streaming. Guys, Maka brought in a lot of people to our community too in those first months. Amazing. You have one of those pink diamonds. Yeah, you're lucky, Green Fang. We appreciate you as well, dude. Have you been good? Have you been, has Maka been walking? Holy. Thank you, Scooter, for the 27 months. She says, thanks for all the recipes and all the good chats. You're very welcome. That's exactly what we try and do here. Tried and true recipes, spreading the deliciousness, and like hanging out and learning something together. She's catching up. Maka, you've gotten out a bit, not going as hard with the streaming as you were. It can wear you out. It definitely can, yeah. Good for you, taking care of yourself. I mean, we took off a weekend, what, a couple of weeks ago, guys? Just to get some rest too, so I feel ya. Yeah, it's no fun to burn out, ever. Okay, I gotta turn this off. I got carried away, but that will be perfect. So now it's just a bit warm in there, and it's gonna help the buns rise. We're gonna keep the towels on. Keep the towel on the sheet pans in there because they will dry out a bit. So four on each one. And go quick, quick. So you don't let all the heat back out. What are we doing here? There we go. Close it up. I will have a drink, thank you. And I'll go actually fill my bottle. If you have someone buy you a camera and a stand, you'll stream your art. Oh, you so should. That's huge on Twitch. Yeah, a lot of people think you just turn on the camera and that's it. It's a lot of work paying attention to chat and the tech and so much else, for sure. And then if there is tech issues, that's even more stressful. More water. Hydration station. Samo, you want me to trim the brisket for you? If you go grab it, I'll do it. Because other than that, guys, we're laughing. I was gonna do um outside, I think. We just have to wait for the buns. Do you want me to set up the outdoor cam then? And yeah, as you saw with the IRL drive the other week, yeah, we tried it on what? The Friday as we were driving up and it just did not work. So we were like, well, we tried, but it didn't work. I thought that the signal would have been better that whole way, but apparently not. We got our tripod.
Where did I put the gimbal? We got the gimbal in here. Doggo's like, yep, we got the gimbal in there. <laughs> Are the food prices affecting us in Canada? Oh, they've been affecting us for like a couple of years now since the pandemic started. But every week it seems to be like something different, let's say. It's just nothing is consistent anymore. So yeah, we try and plan our menus around things that are on sale or just stuff that we can make go a long way, right? Let's connect the outdoor camera. Close these apps. There are some streamers in the US who aren't streaming as much because it's gone up so much. That's insane. Spam, is that what you notice? Eggs and dairy are up 10% just in the last two months. And then one thing I read, because I follow some farmers on Instagram in Canada, the feed for animals has gone up 50% just in the last six months. I hope so, two carses. A date night in is one of them, Maka. Okay, noted. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I, I'm sure it's affecting people. I think I also saw Taz. Taz said that he has been limiting his cooking streams as well. Dust has returned. How was your walk, Dusty? Dust is like, it was dusty, Kate. <laughs> Hopefully farmers are getting rich from all this. I don't think that's the case, Carses, because like I said, Everything else that they need to run the farm has gone up. So they're actually worse off still. And bird flu going around, Scooter. Epoch Cam Pro. I wish we had a beautiful day today. USB. Okay, we already heard the thing earlier, right? And yeah, that's exactly how we do it. Good point, Sam. Is like we offset the cost of our stream ingredients by doing our supper club on Saturdays. I read a article saying you should take down your bird feeders because of the bird flu right now. Oh no. And then that's also because people don't clean them properly either. Gas prices might destroy farmers. Yeah, that too, hey? Okay, testing this. Okay, that works. Let's go this way. That works. Okay, we're good. Push that. A dollar sixty six a liter where you're at, Crimson. I think cars went down a little bit. Ours is at a dollar fifty. We're doing really good on the stream dust. I'm just getting the outdoor cam set up so that we can go light the grill. I'll put a sweater on to go outside. And then we'll grill the flank steak and then should be baking the buns momentarily too. Ouch, that's all good. Awesome. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna bring this out. 
You love steak? Yes, me too. I think this flank steak is gonna be really good again today. We did it last week as well too. Two 10 a liter blood oak? Whoa. Okay, I'll be right back. It's not 20 degrees out like it was last week though. That's for a chore. Oh, it's trying to snow actually. <laughs> we got some light snowflakes. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, this has to get set up this other way. Higher up too, so we can see into the grill. I'm gonna bring a cloth out and we can wake this up together. Come on, girl. Just peeking at my buttons rising. <laughs> Gar says, holy piss. Insane, one to two tanks of gas a year. And yeah, the larger cities tend to be more expensive, I would say. But yeah, the larger cities also have way lower income people. Like we have really noticed that this city has like gone downhill big time since we left. Everyone's struggling. Yeah, it's true, madame. Okay, I'm gonna switch to outdoor cam. I'll get my iPad, I'll put a little fleece on. We can go out there. Get that lit. Yeah, we used to do that too. When we lived in Vancouver, we didn't drive even once, didn't even insure the car, just sat in the parkade and we either walked, biked, or took public transit that was really well, like laid out. But yeah, if you live somewhere like the Midwest or where we are, where everything is spread out, you don't have the option and like the public transit is nowhere near as good. Like, yes, they have LRT here, but it's only in certain areas, like within the city. That's it. Okay, let's do this. Boom. Oh, and I got to fix, fix that. What if I actually just do that instead? Yeah. And nice. We're already at five subs out of our daily goal of 15. So yeah, I have a little bit of stuff to clean up out there. And then we'll get the fire lit. Getting my stream manager up. Should be good to go. Hey, Lee. Oh, and that's the timer for the bread, but I'm gonna just turn it off for now. How else to get this view better? Just with the lighting and stuff. Maybe push this up. And that's not very handy when people just like leave the liquids outside to freeze because then we can't use them. 
not really the best. Probably should remember to bring those in. But hey, that's all I got to say about that. I don't know what else to use to clean it. I guess just some Windex. Yeah, I called the pit master out. I did. I don't stand for that stuff. <laughs> we use metric system here like normal people. Love it. As you should. Bam, bam. Okay. Erlin, 297 Canadian, a liter there. Where are you? You got to be somewhere in Europe too then. Like three bucks a liter? That's like double what we're paying. And we thought our stuff was high in Norway. Oh my gosh. That's insane. So yeah, all of us complaining. We got nothing to complain about. Nothing. Perspective, I always say. Usually there's always someone worse off than you. Turn this inside out. Do a very small wipe of the grill. And yeah, I never clean this stuff until we need to use it because like every day it's kind of getting a bit of dust. So like you'd have to clean it daily. Boom, boom, the little top. There we go. All cleaned up, ready to go. First things first, the top comes off. Just a touch of dust. Can I get us closer at all here? Oh, I don't even have my tripod extended all the way. There we go. Focus, thank you. I think that's about all we're gonna get. So boom, you lift that. We'll definitely have to burn the grate off. I brought an egg mitt out for myself add on while we're tearing this up and then we'll fill it with charcoal and get that lit. The window behind the BGE, a two-way mirror? No. Who dislikes being put on a group text? Oh, I don't know, Mary. I'm really not part of any. So I don't think I have a valid opinion on that one. But I have heard some horror stories. Oh, I also know. Remember last week I was like, yep, next week we'll have to vacuum out the bottom so that we get good airflow. So gotta also bring the vacuum over. It's gonna be loud. Watch your eardrums. We have a loud command if someone can pop that up. So we shake up the charcoal to let any loose ash fall through the bottom. And then I position this properly. Yeah, you can see. So the bottom here, we'll just open that all the way up. I think I can fit in the vacuum down there. 
to get the loose ash. Can I just mute the mic? I can do that too. I probably will. This. Just gonna undo the cord on the vacuum, bring it over. Should be enough. And yeah, we're waiting on parts for the Traeger, guys. It literally broke. It literally broke the other day we tried to stream with it. Okay. <laughs> That's funny, Mary. Okay, I'm gonna mute really quick. Give me a sec. Okay, so that's literally all it takes. I'm just gonna go in with the poker. See if there's anything else. I think I might have pushed a bit to the back. There we go. You'll see when I take the ash poker out what I mean. <laughs> there's a little pile. So I'm gonna mew one more time. Yeah, the poker. Okay, I'm back, guys. That should be it. Yeah. Don't really feel any other big piles of ash in there. It's all clean from loose debris. When you take your poker out, nothing else comes out. Awesome. And yeah, you can like see in pretty good. I'm making a it a bit more forward for us to work in. How's that? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, now we're gonna top it up with some charcoal. I think I just have to push, yeah, the grate a little bit more straight. Straight in the grate. Oh, that's empty. Oh, that's empty. What the heck kind of barbecue place are we running here? I guess it's Kamado Joe. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, 
please uh, roll up your sleeves, Kate, if you're cooking with fire, okay? You got it, Mish. Get some bigger chunks out of this bag. Boom. Oh. And then I know Samo said that he wanted to do a clean burn on the XL today because that's what we're smoking the brisket in tomorrow. Extra large eggly get input to work. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Usually I just put a pile of like smaller charcoal bits in the middle here to help light it quick. And then we can always break it down after. Tap, tap. Loof lighter in our life. AKA big green egg, egg igniter. Do not transport hot egg. This is a fact. As though you're lurking, the audio is the best. Yes, Scoots. Okay, so I pulled back for all the heat first. And then once we got some sparks going. Also, I don't know how this Kamado Joe is gonna light, by the way. Usually it's kind of a piece of poo. Doesn't light as nice. But yeah, once we get some sparks, then we can get the fan going. Yeah, deviled eggs. What did I see? Cosmic cat. Oh, my little charcoals that I'm trying to lit just like crumbled. Get up there. Cosmic cat made some insane like deep fried deviled eggs. I saw her post. Insane. It would be good though, the contrast. You had those today, Mish. That was always like my one uncle and cousins, their one family, that would be their thing they bring to the dinner is deviled eggs. It's like people expected it. So if they ever decided to switch it up, God in heck. I see one lonely spark. Whoa. Okay, we're sparking. Let's do this. Whoa. Watch your face, obviously. Clothes, extremities. Isn't that wild? A tuna salad in the egg. Yo, that would probably be good, Carses. High protein snack for sure. Watch your face. It's literally snowing as we're out here. Snowflakes falling. See if we can kind of get this corner going too. I'm gonna try and nestle those down. Cause I know that the one charcoal Kamado Joe, it takes a long time to light. It takes a freaking long time to light, ouch. That piece was rocking hot already. Light yourself on fire. Should be able to spread that out now. I burnt my thing, you guys. Whoa. 
Deviled eggs with locks? Yeah. Where's this other one? I'm gonna go just fan. Try and get a good little cyclone going here. Is this one still hot? Good thing we had some of that egg charcoal, guys, because I don't think this would light otherwise. The Kamado charcoal is just like, no, I will not. Can you tell? Just the small pieces are lighting, that's it. Even the charcoal, like, as it lights that other brand, it smells weird. More heat. Good thing we came out when we did. This is giving us a run for our money. It is also uh, about 25 degrees colder today than the other day when we lit this. So that also affects it. It's all the charcoals outside. <laughs> the dog's wild and back to over here, I think. Oh my gosh. Ash is crazy. And then hopefully we can go in, turn the oven on and bake the buns and then everything will be timed out. Okay, now, now that we actually have some heat built up in here, let's pile it up a bit more. Looks like we're building all the fire onto this side, but that's okay. We'll just break it down after. Now get your fan to really pump that oxygen in there. It's lit, chat. It's lit. Sammo. Wait, deviled duck eggs? Parabex. That's amazing. Go on this end, I think. That little flame in the front is exactly what we want to see, so I'm getting happier about this. It's getting good. There we go. Yeah! -hoo. Yeah! Ow! The spark got me. Did you see it, guys? Right on there. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! The fire has been lit. Use the poker. Might dig out one more uh, charcoal chunk from the bag for us. Just pop right in the middle here. That's smelling good now though. Getting good. <laughs> yeah, this is the point where normal people would pass out. 
trying to blow on the fire. Totally. Back in the bin. Fishing for some chunks. Oh, Lee. I feel the chunk that I want. It's this one. Look at it. I'm gonna do one more little kiss of heat too. One more. Do you see her? She tries to watch sometimes from the other way. <laughs> She'll peek from behind. <laughs> She's like, I can't get any closer, guys. Yeah. Now we're going. And then I will close this up for the first bit, just cause all this ceramic's really cold. We gotta work on heating that up too. So I'll just pop the lid closed for now and then come back and check in a little bit. Yeah, we're going in, girl. Come on. I'll wash my handles. That was good cold therapy is what I usually call that. Whoa. Remember the meme that Vune made for us? Astra's a silly doggo. She is so silly. So good though. And then Crimson was asking, do you like the BG with just straight charcoal or use any accelerant? Nope, never any butane. That's why we have that special lighter because it's so helpful. Just heat and then air. But then we've also used in the past, they make like these little pucks, organic fire starters. Those work okay, but that is like as natural as possible the way we light the fires. So I'm just gonna wash up, have a peek at our buns, but I'm thinking it's time to turn on the oven to bake those. It's always fun starting the fire out there. Still got it. Yeah, yeah, they're getting puffed up. Those will be good. They're not as good as they usually are though. I will say that. They're not looking as good as when we've done them on the island before. I think it's just the temp of the day today. So 425 Fahrenheit. We'll get that heating up. I'll go a bit lower because I have a convect oven. But yeah, that should only take about 10, 15 minutes to heat up. And then it's an 18 to 20 minute or to bake. Hello, friends. It's a BB Bubs raid with a party of 73. Good thing we mostly prepped everything. The fridge is empty. How was your stream, my dude? Thank you for bringing your crew over here with us today. We are cooking a steak sandwich. Just got the oven heating up to bake our ciabatta buns. And we just let the fire to go outside and grill our steaks together. Welcome in everyone from BBBub's channel as well. I see some names in there that I recognize. I love the overlap in our food and drink community. You made quiches today and he's coming in with a 22 month resub. Today's been good. Yeah, today's been really good so far. It's nice to have some different people in here that they have time off today. And yeah, it's uh 
minus one Celsius up here in Canada, but that doesn't stop us from grilling. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna scroll up. Welcome in from the BB Bubs crew, Alex of Ohio. So fluff. How do I say this? Lou Stella, M Luck, Freya, a guy doing things, Shadow Whisper, Husto 98. Hi, hi, everyone. What kind of quiche did you make today? And yeah, our sandwich. Here's all of the things going on to our sandwich, our menu command. So grilled flank steak, we marinated that up earlier with garlic and herbs. Homemade ciabatta rolls. We did a fresh chimichurri sauce, sliced tomato, spinach, cheese, uh, our own garlic mayo, and just some pickled red onions. Pretty simple. Pretty dang simple. And yeah, we're not Catholic at all, which is why we are not cooking fish today. But to each their own, right? The world's pretty big. We don't judge others on how they eat ever. But everyone's opinion is valid. We do accept this. Before you guys came in, BB Bubs, I was saying how I'm kind of like worried about our buns. The dough's just not behaving the same way it usually does. But I mean, I guess that doesn't mean anything until we bake it. But yeah, absolutely one of my favorite, favorite bun recipes from King Arthur Baking. <laughs> the loser. I judge the crap out of everyone that eats. Everyone. Dust. It's hard to spell the BB Bub's name. You'll get used to it. Trust. And I mean, Bonk, Bonk got the shout out too. So that's good. Okay, how's our egg doing? Let's have a quick peek. Can't see nothing actually of how it's doing, sadly. What if I go to this one? Nope, still can't. Okay. I'm just going to go have a peek out there right now then. <laughs> so many bees. Let us see here. We'll fix up the view too. And then I would say flank steaks take about 10 minutes to cook. And then I like to do a 10 minute rest as well. Okay, so we got that. Definitely close this. I'm trying to heat up the ceramic since everything was really cold today. Yeah, the back is still really cold. But let's burp this. Nice. That's looking good. We can center this a bit better. We're going into the fire today and we'll just use our poker to kind of even out these charcoal chunks. Spread them out. You always want to be cooking over an even surface of coals. Try and eliminate any hot spots the best you can. And yeah, this big chunk, I'm gonna try and keep near the center. It's like old faithful right there. And then move around some of the smaller chunks. Those two. Nice. And then we'll get the grill grate on in a little bit. Start burning that off as well. That's looking dang good. Really, really good. Cleaning and lurking. Had to bring everyone in when you saw the egg. Yeah, you're like, yes, we're cooking with fire. So now we'll close that back up and let it keep evening out. Maybe close the bottom vent just a bit. Doesn't get rocking hot because then it's always harder to cool it back off. And Wanda Girl, thank you for the follow. Going through the fire and the flames. Okay, 
see y'all back inside. Come on, pupper. Biggest snowflakes dropping right now. Biggest. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Stops at the door and looks at me. She's like, so we're not grilling yet? <laughs> No, we gotta wait a little bit longer. Okay, I'm gonna have a really quick bathroom break too. You know what I just thought about? Since we're going out for like a fancy dinner tonight, I'm gonna be the person walking into the fancy restaurant smelling like a smoker, smelling like a grill. Let's do this. Hot Carl. How are you, my dude? Happy Friday to you. How is life? Thank you for the 21 months in a row. BB Bubs with the 22, Hot Carl with the 21. Let's do this. We had a bunch of one years today. And then thank you as well for the follow, Cleopatra. Good to see you. I love that emote. <laughs> That's so good. You're doing good? Yeah, we're doing good too. Lots of good foods being cooked this weekend. We get to meet a community member tonight. We're going out for dinner and then we get to feed him brisket tomorrow. So that's exciting. <sighs> All good things. It's a mood yet. <laughs> Kate walks in, everyone starts ordering barbecue. Yeah, whether or not we even have it. <laughs> Oh man, is Blondie from Edmonton, Niche? I believe he's from Toronto, the province of Ontario, but I also could be completely wrong. All I know is that he is from Canada or he resides in Canada, but not in our province. Sam might know a little bit more. They've been the ones kind of chatting and organizing stuff on the backside. Solid Danadian though, indeed, for sure, for sure. Yeah, he's been with us for over a year, for sure, in our community. And well, all he seems to do is travel and eat, which I can definitely get behind. It's like, what do you do in your life? Because I would like to do that as well. <laughs> okay, these buns. We'll just uncover them, pop them in the oven when that's ready. When that light turns off, we know we're good. And Mrs. Dietz, thank you for the follow. And I suppose one more thing that we're just working on with the grill outside, since we're cooking right over charcoal, is we do kind of want to control the heat in there. So last week when we did the flank steaks, we did them at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. We brought up the internal temp and then just closed off the bottom vent, cooked right over the charcoal with the lid open. That works so, so good. So yeah, we have the steaks out of the fridge right now. They've been marinating for, let's say two and a half hours. By the time we cook them, probably three hours. 
And yeah, the vinegar in there like helps to break down the connective tissue in the flank steak, but also season it. And then the garlic and herbs, so good. So really the only other thing we'll bring out with that is a touch of salt and pepper. We did a pinch of each in the marinade, but we always do a little bit more to season before we cook. That's our little station. And then one other thing too, is when you're cooking meat, a lot of people don't ever do this because they think it's not safe to do with the meat, but you can take it out of the fridge. Bigger pieces like a flank steak up to an hour ahead of when you're gonna cook it. And then what that does is it brings up like the whole temperature of the piece of meat at one time and then it grills more evenly due to the fact that it's not like ice cold out of the fridge and then you're taking so long to get the middle heated through that by the time you get the middle cooked to what you want the outside is like dry and weird right one time on diners drive-ins and dives guy ran into a couple who has eaten at like 70 plus restaurants guys done the show at pleased that his fans are actually going on triple d road trips what imagine when the truck is built and we're like living in it triple d road trip month let's do this <laughs> oh man that'd be really cool We've been to a couple of spots that Guy Fieri has ate at as well. A couple of places in Vancouver. Um, I forget the noodle place now. Totally forget the noodle place, but it's like a Asian noodle place we went to as well as a place called the Red Wagon, which makes amazing brunches. But yeah, don't know if we've had gone anywhere here. Oh wait. Did Trace Carnelli's The Taqueria here get on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives? Maybe. That's about all I know, though. Sounds like a proper challenge, I would say. Couple places in Ottawa, a few in Toronto. Yeah, I haven't watched that show in forever. That would be What's On Late at Night. Diners, drive-ins, and dives if you want food content. And then you just get so hungry and sad because then you have snack cravings and then you just go to bed. <laughs> I think that's why I stopped watching it. I was like, this isn't fair. I can't handle it. Can't do this. Yay, I was hoping that that light was gonna go off in like moments so that we can put the buns in. Let's put the buns in. I don't know what we're gonna get out of this. Something edible, yes, but whether it's like picture worthy, I suppose we'll see. So I'm gonna do a 10 minute timer that should be around the halfway point for these, and then we'll rotate them. And then while those are going, Let's go dial in the grill a little bit more. You should be able to pop the grate on and get that burning off. I have not really ever watched the Pioneer Woman, but I've seen some recipes online from her before they look good. You're coming, pup? She's coming. Wait for her. Burn off the grill grate, and then we can get cooking. It's true. Because it's messy from last time. Always burp this. Pop that there. And then I didn't actually read what the temp in here was at. I'm trying to keep this centered, it's kind of leaning. There we go. You can see it's already smoking from the beef fat from last time we did this steaks. It was around 450, so I'm just gonna open that a bit more. 
some more fuel for the fire in. <laughs> Reminds you of your aunt who absolutely hated Rachel Ray simply because she used black dish towels. <laughs> okay, come on, Astra. So I'll come back in. Just scrape that off in like five ish minutes. What if we do this one? Yeah, that's a better view. Yahoo! Your stepbrother's wife put out a little cookbook. She got Chef Michael Smith to write the foreword. Cool. Yeah, those things, like, not as far out of reach as we all think they are. I think people, they make it seem like it's hard to, like, do your own cookbook, but it's honestly not. Okay. All of the list has been crossed off. We're good. We're good to go. Oh, chilly out there. That's why I keep coming in just to stay warm. We did really good keeping things clean today too. I don't think we made too much dishes or anything like that. It's awesome. Ru used to run a little mom and pop cafe in their town. Sweet. Yeah, that's something that I've always wanted to do. Oh. I know one more thing that I have to do. Just gonna go wash off the serrated knife that we cut the cheese with earlier. Cause we gotta cut the bun still. We gotta bun up. Boop. Soapy water sponge. Yeah, Sam and I, we just want to cook good food for awesome people. That's literally it, guys. Want to cook good food for awesome people that appreciate it. Okay, the buns are puffing up. I think we'll be all right. They do look not quite the same as last time. But I think they'll still be all right. <laughs> what? Imagine how painful farts would be if they were serrated. Please. Why? I'm terrified. Astra cut the cheese. P.U. Wow, that emote just reminds me of Sunny. Is it a Tabatai emote? No. Oh, it's from Moose Does Stuff. Also serrated burps. <laughs> okay, peeking at the dial there, it looks like we're working up to 500 on the grill, so that's good. Couple things while we're in here. Get our hot cloths to turn the buns around. They'll puff up. The buns, they're definitely rising, but I'm worried that the crust is gonna be tough on them, which tells me that they rose, like they proofed too slow, I think. And yeah, doggo. So that's my brother's doggo, brother and his partner. That's Astra, and my brother works in his shop when I stream a lot, so she likes to come over and be like the cooker helper dog. She's the best. That's Astra. Turn your buns around. I want to see them. We will. We got three minutes. Did my timer get stopped? Oh no. Okay, it didn't. What if we go check on the grill right now? 
see how the grill grade is doing and then in three minutes we're gonna rotate the bunners <laughs> yeah no welding flash in the kitchen <laughs> Yeah, she's a good assistant. Doesn't complain or ask for much. No, not at all. She's so good. This is what she usually does. It's literally that. Just literally lay right there and wait for the next best thing to happen. It's a dog's life, you know? I'm just gonna wait for this timer. That's a vibe. <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> I'm jealous too. Man. <laughs> okay, I'll take this scene out. We'll do that one for now so you can see the oven. The band, you know what? It is really nice. But my one complaint is that I got too stretched out. Crimson. So now it's like super floppy on my wrist. And I have to put it in such a weird spot. Otherwise, it's just like I don't like floppy things hanging on my hands when I'm cooking. So I have to like push it halfway up my wrist and then the watch doesn't work the way it should. Oh, I know, Bonk. It's wrapping it up. It feels like you stayed a bit later today. But yeah, it's Friday, so we'll see you tomorrow. And Sam's starting super duper early. You might be just going to bed when he's starting the brisket in the morning here. Bye, Bonk's buns. Oh no, Bonk won't see the buns. Okay, I'm gonna wait 40 more seconds and then we'll see the buns. There's been complaints about you being there early. In what world is that valid? for a complaint. <laughs> Alf, hello friend, lurking and cooking. What you got? What you got on the go? Excuse me, uh, you're showing up too early. Can you just not? What? Skinny arm problems, I guess. Like they make you measure out your wrist before you buy the band, so we did that. But yeah, it's still not as good. People are running out of things to complain about. Now they're nitpicking for sure. Okay, let's do this. I waited the 40 seconds. And they're kind of saja. Like they're puffing up, but not as good as they should. The top one's definitely not. Not a good day to make ciabatta buns. Gotta wait to make our bread until it's warmer outside. Okay, let's go look at the grill. I'm gonna do, instead of a full 10 minutes on there, I think I'm gonna do eight, which should be the first kind of time increment they said, 18 minutes. Hey Siri, eight minute timer. Eight minutes, starting now. Wahoo. Alf is making Indian spiced roast pork with yellow curry cucumber raita. Yes, please. I'll be right over. See, I wish I would have had someone tell me that creep tumor. Guy at the store told me to buy one size down for the measurement for the elastic ones. Like now I feel like I'm at the point where I have to sell this band. I want, well, I'm gonna lose money on that just to get something that fits. Or I was like, I'll just sell the whole watch. Heck it at this point. Okay. Is there a rule for more or less yeast for temp, humidity, and pressure? Uh, I'm sure there's something out there, Karsis. Or would it be more or less water? All of those things. It's all of those things combined. The temperature of your flour even has been things that I've read up on. And it's like, okay, I literally can't control every single part. And that's why a lot of people don't like to bake, right?
And then the other thing on uh, our side here is the water is really hard. Like we have hard water in the city compared to where we used to live by the ocean. So I think that also affects how stuff acts and bakes up. Astra, don't. She likes to eat the little charcoal chunks. Holy. Okay, we gotta dial that in a bit. First, I'm gonna scrape. This way. These are bamboo bristles. And then we'll let that burn off the rest of the way. And then looks like I have to start dialing in the temp just a bit more because those flames are not what we want to see. We just want to have a nice bed of coals. I'm gonna close that up quite a bit. Ask the guy at the pizza place the same question about dough. He laughed and said, 40 years of making pizza is how to know. I know. So like no one has an answer then. Not anyone. Okay, come on girl. So five minutes and then we'll get the steaks on. It's always a good idea to bake your buns earlier. Come on, Astra. We're almost there. Yeah, come on. Because your buns will have to cool before you can slice into them and build the sandwich. We're back. Yeah, some people literally just mix their doughs by eye every single day and it works out. I think they have something magical inside of them though for that to happen. <laughs> These buns, guys? I don't know. Might be running to the bakery real quick. <laughs> you know, it's bad when I say that. Yeah, just experience all of the above. But yeah, just judging by how those looked, it just was too cool inside today. It took too long to rise. And then once you get that like outer film on the dough, you can't go back from that. It's not too dry, that's for sure. It's just too dang cold out. So, lesson learned. There's no bread being baked anymore until it warms up, I'm going to say. I guess we can start to get out some of the condiments that we're going to need for this sando. The garlic mayo, I'll bring out the pickled onions, we got the spinach, cheese and tomato ready to go. And yeah, actually, I think I like that view better with the oven. some of our homemade hot sauce in case Samuel wants to drizzle some of that on the sando because I can see that being so good homemade chipotle buffalo to you baking seems more of a strict science than cooking mm-hmm yeah baking you really have to follow the recipe you can't really make too many 
changes from the recipe without it affecting the end result. And then like cooking is opposite that. Cooking, you can kind of tinker with it the whole time that you're doing stuff, right? And like, even if you mess up a little bit while cooking, you're usually still able to save it and make something edible by the end. Whereas like, if you mess up mixing dough from the start, that's it, you have to start over. And yeah, I don't often deviate from baking recipes, which is why I always like to share the best ones with you guys. Cause like, if I don't have to deviate from it and it works really good every time, then that should be a recipe that a lot of people make. Okay, what we got? Oh, 45 seconds. Oh wait, no. Okay guys, what? It says the eight minute timer just started. So I must have hit it. Yeah, bartender is clearly the best at measuring. Their method goes unappreciated. Yes, yeah, to like have things taste consistently in the drinks all the time, but they don't often use like a shot glass all the time. Yeah, really good bartenders. They just got their bottles, their glasses, and they're going. They know what they're doing. It's all habitual movements. Okay, those are getting browned and we will do the temperature test on the buns. So 195 Fahrenheit or higher, we know that they're baked through and edible. I had two eight minute timers set. I don't even know what's happening anymore. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick check. A lot of steam. That's literally rock hard. I don't think we're gonna have sandwiches today. And they're done. Well, that was a waste. That was a waste, guys. I'm not even gonna like try and play it off. Like it's gonna be a thing. I got nothing. I don't know why that happened. But yeah, they didn't even really bake up any different than how they rose. Sag. I don't know what to say. I think it's just the temperature. I tried my best to make the happiest situation. I'm just gonna transfer it to one tray to cool off. But yeah, that's basically trash. I'll just turn it into breadcrumbs. So a steak sandwich is not happening then. We'll have steak without bread. <laughs> what? That's life sometimes. And I'm not surprised, actually. It might be okay. I'll let them cool off. But they're not like how they should be. Maybe as they kind of cool off, the outside will get a bit softened. But that's all I got, guys. Okay, let's go out, make sure this steak is perfect. French dip? Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to be dipping that into something to make it soft enough to eat. Let's uh, go distract ourselves with some meat. Oop. Stream starting soon. Let's just redo everything. that got my thermometer and i think that's it our salt and pepper we're good weird buns Weird, weird buns. This is gonna get moved over, I think. Nice, we're literally sitting at 500 Fahrenheit. That can go there. Or 
think it was actually better if I move it the other way. Just going by how the lighting is out here today. Boom. Let's do that. Cut off. Ready? Let's burp it. And then we're gonna close the bottom vent. There we go. Look at that. So that's the bed of coals that we want to see. There's no flame popping up out of control. The grate is nice and cleaned. So we're literally just gonna take this big, big steak, I've been marinating for three hours, and pop it on the grill. It's literally just going to fit to you. Whoa. There we go. That got folded a bit. Holy. And then we're not going to touch that. Now. I am going to put some salt and pepper on. There was a bit in the marinade, but I always do more once it starts cooking. And then this will be about five minutes per side. And then we can also see how the flank steak always tapers from one end to the other. So this one end closest to the camera is the thickest, and then it tapers down to a very thin piece of meat over there. Well, you always have one side that's more well done and one side that's gonna be more rare. Good amount of salt on the thick side. That should do it. Just a nice even sizzle. No flare ups. Don't want anything like that. And then I also brought out an extra pan to put the steak into after it's been cooked. Yeah, we have one more in there that we can cook up. Looks so dang good too. So yeah, we'll do like two and a half minutes, give it a little rotate on the grate, and another two and a half, and then go for the flip. I'm just gonna go in, grab a sweater. It's chilly. She is not nice. Well, it smells like good bread in here. It smells like tasty bread bits. Okay, the buns are softening up. Maybe Kate freaked out for nothing. And Plasma Badger, hi. I'm just putting a sweater on inside and then I'll be back out. Just did some steak sandwiches a couple days ago. Yum. Roasted poblano, red pepper and cream cheese. That'd be good. And hi, EHPZ. How are you? As well as thank you for the follow. I don't know how to say this. Ima deck capsule? <laughs> I medi capsule? Maybe that one. And yeah, we have homemade rolls. They're kind of funny, but we'll we'll check them out in a bit together. Almost. I try my best here. And okay, Mary, love you. Thank you for the hundred bitlies. Hope you have a great rest of the day. And yeah, I hope you feel a little bit better too. I know you said you were not feeling the best earlier. I met a capsule. Okay, 
So we know that it's time to turn the steak when it doesn't stick to the grill grate. Nice. Nice grill marks there. So now we're gonna go opposite way. Bam. Give that a little press so it really adheres again. And then we'll do a couple more minutes and then give it a proper flip. And yeah, EHPZ, you love steak sandwiches since you're from Philly. The ciabatta rolls didn't turn out as well as I wanted today. I think it's just too cool outside for them to proof properly. But I think they'll still be edible. We'll still be able to stuff them. They're just not as light and airy as crusty as they should be. But all we can really do is try our best every day. That's it. Try your best. If it doesn't work, try again next time. But just don't give up. Don't get discouraged if things don't work out. Every mistake is just a lesson learned. Yeah, sleeves. I will get you. I Don't make me bring the igniter over there, face plant. Where'd Astra go? Astra? There you are. What you do? What you do, poppers? Hi. Never give up. Never surrender. Yeah, watch out. Watch the tripod. You're doing crazy stuff, girl. Hey, Cookie, we did smash the food truck goal and we don't even know who did it. 10,000 bits anonymous. I know it wasn't you. <laughs> 10,000 bits anonymous. <laughs> It's almost time to flip it. Sambo must be uh, napping. Is this steak crying? Yes. It might be. I think it actually is time to flip it. Ready? Gotta be really sure of where you place it on the grill. Cause once you put it down, you ain't moving it for a bit. Now that's looking good. Yeah, a hundred percent of the bit goal. What is going on here? Shiggy, hi blondie, how are you my dude? Do we need a closer view on this by the way? Wanna get closer up? into there. I might shorten the tripod just a bit so we get like closer to grill view. Those two, I know you're on the side right now. There we go. We are literally just cooking over charcoal. Were your ears burning the last few hours? Everyone's so pumped that you're getting to hang out with us today. I'm getting pumped. I haven't even gone out for dinner like that for a while. Kate's been talking about you a fair bit during the stream. Don't worry though, nothing bad. No, it's all bad things, obviously. Okay, so I can start to see some juices coming out. If you ever cook steaks at home, you know that those juices mean that it's actually almost done. Usually I look for the juices to start coming out and that means it's medium rare inside. 
ears are fuming a bit. But your schedule this weekend mostly got freed up now. Well, that's good, Blondie. That's good to hear. So, like, are you here to, like, work as well then? It's a work trip? Remember my one steak that I cooked last week was a bit rare? So I'll make sure that we really check it thoroughly. Your girlfriend's mom used to cook up steak for their beagle. Now that is some fancy food for a doggo. It's a work and pleasure trip. So cool, man. That's awesome. It's getting there, Karsis. I think I'm almost ready for the other flip. Or turn, rather. We've already flipped it. We're just going to do a turn. But yeah, seems like really nice even heat. I'm going to bring this thicker part back over to the front again. Like there. This little bit that's crisped up where the fat was. Yum. No flare-ups at all. This is just happy. And I mean, hey, we built the same fire last week, so there should be no reason why we didn't build an awesome one again this week. Put some meat hearts in chat. Eat plants instead of meat. Sheesh, meesh. <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> yeah, she ain't there yet. We can also give it a little poke. Get in there. Even this end is like, just get in there. Mmm. Tasty meat juices, though. Eat better instead of feta. That's how you feel. <laughs> that is Scooter's vibe right now. Hey, nice, Faceplant Kagers. You're making a tofu pad thai tonight. Hey, we see these juices over here. Do I have to zoom in? Look at the juices. They're just starting to pool up in that area and come out of the meat. That's telling us that that end is now medium rare, but we still have to go a bit more on the thicker side. Boom, boom. Get our queen resting container out for that. I got a, I don't know if you can see this view. Can you see the dog's head? <laughs> Just just poking through there. She's like, don't. Guys, are you a beef dog? Really? Hey, watch the tripod. Always cook with sleeves, rolled down. The meat's talking to us. It's going chicken. And then we'll put the other one on. We'll put the other one on the grill, I think. Actually, I might wait. Just keep the grill hot. Nah, I'll put it on. I'm not scared. Shouldn't take us too long to build this sandwich. Okay, I'm gonna feel this. That's pretty rare still. On this end. Let's see though. This is gonna be your tried and true checker. Yeah, if she was a cat, she'd be up on the counter for sure. Hey, Crimson. Okay, I'm gonna poke in over here where it's kind of split open. Hey, we're just at like 118, 120. So we'll go a few more moments and then we'll be good. That's why you always rest your meat because those juices will redistribute. Blondie, I'll be free in about 20 minutes, by the way, Kate. 
We should have enough extras if you do want to pop by for a snack. I don't know if Sam gave you our address yet, but yeah, feel free to pop on over. Yeah, I grew up with like always having pets in the house crimson, whether it was like a dog or a cat. So I know exactly what you mean. I think that's it guys. Yo, the underneath got so nice and charred. I'm literally just gonna put the next one on. And then we can go in and start making some sandwiches. So let's put this on and season it. Give it a nice press. Get the best grill marks on there. Well, nice thing about this view is I can go inside and stream and we can always just take a peek at this because the lid will be open. Have a peek at the flank, see if it needs any extra love. You've seen streams where the streamer's cat practically takes over a stream, yeah. That's not what we're about. Cause yeah, cats are crazy. They would do that. Okay. Let us go inside. I also have to take a photo of this steak in the pan. So I'm gonna quickly do that. I'll let you guys watch this steak for a bit. Take my photo. When are they sending the replacement for the Traeger? I think we have to wait two weeks before it comes in, Lily. Okay, come on in. Look at this. Look at that thing. The juices. Got a really good photo for our Cambro post. And Syfex, thanks for the follow, look at that. So just to keep that like warm as it rests for a few moments, we'll just kind of pop the lid on the side like that. Let some of the steam out, but we don't want it to keep cooking and stay really hot because it will do that. Rat Fink. That looks fire. Need any help eating it? Well, I just got told that maybe someone will come and help us eat it. You're too late. So I'll just put that over to the side. Okay, earlier, let's, let's look at these. They've been cooling off and I first wrote them off. I wrote off these buns because they are nothing like what they should look like. But the crust did soften up. I'm just worried that they might be a bit dense. They should be like twice as thick. <sighs> A bit dense, honestly, but like still really nice and squishy and pliable. They're just more chewy than they should be. So I'm gonna save all of these corner ones. Actually, I don't like the look of that one. They look okay. 
they definitely could be better but i mean they also could be way worse and inedible you know me i have pretty high expectations for myself and i always try and be as honest as possible with you guys so like if something is actually not good i will tell you Hi, Clem. They look delicious. Thank you. Do one more for us. Might actually do. Yeah, I'll do this one. And then we got to wake the bear up next. I think. I think he would want to eat this before we go. Yeah, creative people tend to be the most critical. Yeah, for sure, right? Like, that looks nummy still. But it should be way more airy and pocketed in there. If you've had ciabatta before, you would know what I mean. If you haven't, then you might think I'm just being a little bit crazy. Nice, Clem. Yeah, I don't discriminate any types of bread, Kate. I eat them all. Okay, that, got that resting. We got the other steak on the grill still. I'm gonna have a peek. It looks good. I'm gonna go turn it over in a moment. I'm gonna shake the bear, earthquake him. Hello. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> Mish, they're fine, Kate. I've made way worse. And then I don't know if you want to chat with Blondie, but he said he's free. Oh, he can okay. pop over soon if he wants a steak sandwich. I don't know. Up to you. Okay, I'll see you guys out there. We're gonna flip this last flank steak over while our first one is resting. And then we're gonna start building the sandals and the steak should be like last thing kind of going on. Yes! That is money. I'm actually just gonna close this up. Let it finish. Where's my little lid? Bottom's already closed. Just gonna do that. And I'll come grab it in like five minutes. I guess I can take my sweater off now. We're done outside. So five minute timer I just set. <laughs> yeah, good thing we always just make trash food. Hey, Mish, never get hungry watching this stream. I'm just gonna build the sandwiches on the board like this. Put that up. So we'll go boom, 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 that way. We have our Mayo. That's actually how I like to do it is stack the condiments up top. Mayo. I did bring over the hot sauce in case the boys wanted some. Pickled red onion. Tomato slices. We got our cheese. And then lastly, we have our washed spinach. 
chilling in the colander. Actually, we're gonna do this instead. Let's go grab this pan from the buns, just for transferring purposes, because we'll still have to cut the steak after. Go boom, boom. And that way, if we make a mess, it's okay. It all stays in the sheet pan. And actually, like this cheese, love to for that to get like a little bit softened. I'm gonna put it in the steak container where it's resting. I'd like for it to get a bit melted -y. They're cute and small. Yeah, like look at Kate's face versus bun. So cute and small. Okay, garlic mayo coming into our life. A nice lather of the mayo on the bottom bun. Probably do the same on the top bun. Definitely want it all the way to the edge. Garlic mayo. do a, a little bit thinner on the top, but still a bit for sure. You'll need it. Need a bit extra moisture and flavor. Once you get everything on there, kind of makes the flavors less, right? Especially when you add in veggies that are fresh, like spinach and tomato. Okay, that looks good. Next one, I was planning on doing the spinach so that everything else can kind of weigh it down, smush it, and like kind of crush it in my hand first. So they're really like thick leaves. Definitely not baby spinach. That should be good. Maybe one more. Boom. See, that's also why I brought over the sheet pan. Sometimes when we drop or are building the sandwiches, stuff drops all over. And then we also have to strategically build these so that they don't just completely make a mess when people eat them. This ain't that baby spinach, that's that old, old spinach. It's seen stuff. It's been places. The leaves are so hard. Good advertising. It once upon a time was a baby. Definitely not anymore though. What's our timer on the steak outside? Done, literally as I look at it. So I'm, we'll go grab that. The cheese softened. It did. It did. That. That. Okay, do we want to see that veal? Taking the other steak off. Our tongs are out there still, I believe so. Look at the difference here. So that's called flogging. 
when you close it off completely, but keep your food in to cook it with the steam. Just gonna put it underneath the other steak. It feels good. Closed, done. Good herb mixture with the garlic. <clears throat> the pepper's getting me. So the one we just took off is in the bottom there. Put it underneath. Okay, let's do tomato next. Couple slices. One bigger one, one smaller one. We're almost there, chat. Press it down if you feel like you need to. Rinsing my hands. Just gonna grab some tweezers to fish out the pickled red onions. I am. <laughs> Make an extra one for Blondie. Looking delish and fresh. Thank you, cameras. I think it's gonna be good. Let me in. Let me in, onions. Take some of those out. Kind of spread them out a bit instead of keeping them all stacked together like that. This will add a little bit of crunch, sweetness, some acidity. Oh, we almost forgot the chimney. It's in the fridge. I was like, I felt like I was forgetting something. That's it. That would be very incomplete. We forgot that. Actually, I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna take a photo. This is part of my sponsored post. This is my pickled onions. Just I need Samo's camera a moment. Gonna go from this, this side over. Uh-oh, my thumb got too cold outside, guys. It doesn't register as a touchscreen option anymore. Oh, I think Sam's phone is just effed. Let's retry. Uh. Hello? Now this is what I get. Hi, it died. Oh, I'm just trying to bring up your camera and it keeps freezing. I just did that. That should fix it. So if you're watching a Twitch stream, you can't take photos. What? Actually? 
Oh. Okay. Okay, uh. those and those are gone. Next one. Cheese, cheese, if you please. And we're double stacking it. Well, I did make some of them pretty thick. So some of them might be a single stack. But the good news is there's lots of extra sliced cheese. Where's the other thick one? There we go. That? McKay AJ! How are you? And I'm just gonna go run grab the chimichurri before we slice the meat. Chimmy. We made this earlier. Yamo. Cilantro, parsley, garlic, shallot, red wine, vin. Yeah, we let it warm up a bit too. And just some olive oil, salt and pepper. This will get spooned over. Very herbaceous sauce that goes insane with grilled meats. So, so good. Okay, cutting board. Let's go this side. So we have some pooling options for juices. So I'm sure we'll have some juices. And then I'll just put my scimitar on the steel really quick and then we'll get some nice good slices. That's been the perfect amount of time that this steak has rested though. I wouldn't go shorter than that. And you'll be surprised those bigger pieces of meat, how well they hold the heat after they come off of it. To wipe that blade. This, this is the first one we cooked. Also, look at the juices. Look at them. Um, the juices. So, let's talk about this. How to cut a flank steak. A lot of people don't know this part. But we can see the meat grains right off of the bat. They're running this way. So not like straight like this way, they're kind of angled, right? So we have to follow that angle with the knife as well as angle our knife like this to get really nice, clean, thin slices against the grain. Sam cut it better than me last time. I kind of watched him, so I'm gonna try and do what he did. So I'm left-handed, I'm gonna turn it that way a bit. And then I always start on the thin end and taper towards the thick one. Because that'll keep kind of resting out over here as you slice. Actually, kind of like that. First bites. Whoa. Look at that. Whoa. I don't think I could have cooked it more perfect this time. Remember last week it was a little bit under still? Oh, I need to eat it, Mish. The end piece. Mmm. Okay. We thought last week was good. This is it. I'm done. It's not chewy at all. Whoa. It was yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ban. Ban the streamer. See how even it cooked this time too? It's not like kind of under on one end and over on the other. We did rest it for a perfect amount though. And yeah, these slices, 
I'm doing better than last week. Also trying to keep it really nice and thin so that this sandwich is easy to eat. You don't just like pull out an entire piece of steak. Okay, that looks too good. I gotta take a photo. Yeah, always against the grain when you have this cut. Always slice against, because if you slice with, you'll be uh, chewing your steak for years to come. Just keep going, guys. And yeah, like I said, so obviously it gets way more rare. So you get towards the thicker end piece, but that's good to keep. Let it cool off and you can slice it the next day once it's been cooled and that's yummy for snacks. Look at that end bit that came off there. Eat that too. Really good marinade again. Proper seasoning. Probably gonna stop here again. We even let that juice for a long time. And it's still like that. I'm gonna slice off a little bit where it's kind of rare just to see how chewy it is. It's not? Okay, let's just see. Just from a like cook's or chef's standpoint, this is our responsibility. It's not. Mmm. Whoa. That's good. And then, yeah, you'll have this like kind of connective -y tissue running through on this end too. So just watch for that. I probably wouldn't put that slice of meat in the sandwich. This one here, we'll let it just stay on the end for snacks. Cause that will be chewy, those connective -y bits. The meat though, will not be. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Definitely enough for three sandwiches already. I can always slice Blondie's fresh closer to when he arrives. I'm gonna just put this knife over there. Our sandwich tray. <laughs> Clem, Kate, please. I want this. Oh, I guess I didn't have to wash my hands. Such a habit. Now we're gonna put the meat on and then we'll pile the chimichurri on top of that. So let's do like a little bit of rare. Also, can I just pick this out? Kind of. Maybe it's more fat than connective -y bits. And then I don't like to really like, well, maybe we can pile it a bit, like fold it over. But I always find like if you build the sandwich like that, then you're more likely to pull a lot of the meat out when you go to munch. Layer that on. Next one.
taking one more of that rare piece off. Spread it out more on here. There we go. Are those babies? Look at the juices. And I'm okay if that goes into the bread. This we are okay with. Have a little bit hanging out the end to munch on. Soak that up. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Shimmy it up. And we get to taste. That is a fat one, Lou Boo. You like yours well done, boss man? Okay, you have to let me know earlier next time then. Because I don't eat my steak well done. Oh, throw the chimney. You can tell the olive oil is a bit cold still. It's not really dolloping the way I like. I'm gonna do this. It's my other finger. Yeah, we made this sauce from scratch earlier today on stream, just in our food processor. It was super easy. And it should season the veg really nicely too on here. Need a bit more. I'm gonna close up my bros and give it to him. Bren, just wait. Yeah. Yeah, the buns didn't turn out as good, but I think it'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, if you need more steak, just pop on over. We got another one resting. Enjoy. Cheers. 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 You're welcome. <laughs> Astra's like, Dad, what you doing? Where are you going with that? Okay, guys. Let's get this out of here. We'll close it up. Put our stuff on a plate. Samo, did we lose you again? You're combing? You're more of a medium well kind of gal, Clem, but as you said, you don't discriminate. It'll get eaten as long as it's not raw. And, loser says, eaten a few raw ones too? Meats, you're saying? I've done that, like beef carpaccio. That's good. And then did you guys notice how like I put the warm meat on the cheese so it kind of softens and melts it up? There's a method to that madness. I might close up this one too, just to get an awesome photo with those pieces sticking out. This is the husband, oh Lubu. <laughs> Twitch Blackmore. Hurry, hurry oh, with the hurry, chimichurri. Hurry. No. Just did that as option. <laughs> Uncle.
Okay, photos have been taken. Take this off. It's time to taste. The bun is straight effed up, Sam. But hopefully, like, it seems like they softened up. Okay? This dog. Where is Astra? Literally right there. Literally. He hot sauced it up. Holy. There's stuff flying out everywhere. Okay, cheers, guys. Cheers. Look at this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm, look at my face. That's how it should be. We're eating a sandwich. Mmm. Mmm. The Emmental is so good in there. Look at my nose is running. I'm a mess. I'm a straight up mess right now. In the best way. The garlic mayo's money. Juice is dripping. <laughs> good. I even know the other side now. Mmm. Vicky, what? <laughs> Thank you. I guess she likes Kate's dirty face. This guy. Okay, let's welcome in. Friends of barbecue. Flower the talking flower. Just a guy too. Can one do a thing? And Palooza! Thank you, Vicky. And then she comes in with this, even. She's like, here's new subbies. And here's also my eight month resub. <laughs> Thank you. I hope your week went good. This was our first day cooking back on Twitch. So far, real tasty. Real heckin' tasty. The buns didn't end up being trash, so that's good. Didn't have to go for an emergency bun run at the store. Steak was cooked well. All the condiments turned out. I could easily eat two of these. Samo is part of Clean Plate Club. <laughs> Plasma Badger, 1848. Thank you for the Prime Gaming sub for four months. Had to send some steak sandwich cheers from Wisconsin. Looks so good. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm happy to be an inspiration for all of you today. It still turned out. We always try our best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at the way it's biting, too. Not just falling apart. A uh, healthy garlic flavor, let's say. <laughs> Between the marinade on the steak, the chimichurri with garlic in it, and the garlic mayo, mm, it's good. Week's good for you, Vicky. Off today, glad you got in. Yeah, literally just in time. Just here for the plate up. We did it. Yeah, Blondie comes over, guys. We're gonna kill him with our garlic breath. No vampires allowed. Hopefully he's not one. Real good. <laughs> Chewy? Nope.
Whoa, guys. That is everything I wanted it to be. Even with the baby buns. Even those turned out. Phew. Oh, heavy breathing? That's when you know. Yeah. Samo has a... Don't smile. You got a parsley in the middle, right in the center. Oh. Okay, guys. So, the plan. You're waking up at 2 a.m. mountain time. That's the time. Tomorrow for the Blood Oak. 100,000 pots and pans points saved up just watching the stream. That's a Cook with Sammy request. So Blood Oak requested a smoked brisket sort of platter. So that's what we're doing. And it's also going to be part of Supper Club. So that's exciting too. We get to feed more people Southern barbecue, enlighten their lives. So yeah, 2 a.m. Mountain Time, this man is going to be popping on Twitch on our my channel, starting up the smoker, getting the brisket going. It could take 12 hours. It could take up to 20 hours. Nobody knows. So it's not going to take 20 hours. It's not going to take 20 hours? Okay, phew. And then it'll be smoking in the extra large big green egg. Excuse me. Small belch of approval for the chef. And then to go along on that platter, I love to serve brisket with mac and cheese. So we'll do a three cheese baked mac. Uh, small amount of noodles bought yesterday for that. <laughs> hey, macaroni. And then what else? We're just gonna do simple seasoned grilled vegetables to go on the side of the brisket. And then the dessert I'm actually so excited for. Apple or caramel apple cheesecake jar. So a whipped cheesecake instead of a baked one. It's one of my fave. Some bloody beard. Thank you for the follow. We're getting beard follows for that one. Amazing. Yeah, you too, Kimmers. Thank you for everything. Ah, don't. Beard attack. Don't. Beard attack. Please. We don't like cheese here, Mish. Really? Sheesh. Okay, we're gonna go see uh, another smoky stream. Let's go see Montana Max barbecue. Maple smoked salmon. A maple smoked salmon coming into our life. <laughs> Some bloody beard. LOL, that is a nice beard, but I'm actually here for the food. <laughs> yes. Shit. They're here for me. Ah. Okay. Ah. Montana Max Bar Barbecue. One day we'll meet this guy too. I know it. Okay, I think I spelled everything right. The raid has been created. Friends, thank you for the awesome day of streaming, cooking. We also had an awesome raid from BB Bubs. Love that community. Spend a lot of time there off stream, I would say. So thank you to them for that. And yeah, we also crushed our bit goal today. 10,000 anonymous bits donated to finish that. What? We don't even know who it was. Thank you. I'm just gonna keep that goal up the rest of the weekend because I'm so happy. It's insane. <laughs> Rat Fink, is this accurate? Montana Max is cool. He smoked some bald eagles on the big green egg last week. I haven't seen him use an egg. Has anyone else seen this? Can you smoke bald eagles? That's like us making rat jerky. That's about that. <laughs> okay. On that note, I hope to see everyone <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> for our awesome smoky stream. It'll be starting at 2 a.m. our time and going until like probably 5 p.m. So yeah, it'll be a long one. You can pop in and out. All good. Please don't do it, Mish says. Okay, we won't, I swear. Okay, guys. Love y'all. Stay safe. Hope to see you tomorrow. Awesome stream. Lots of resubs today. Love it. I'm gonna hit that button. Until next time. Bye!